Today it is finally time to react to all 88 150cc Mario Kart 8 Deluxe World Records without further ado, here we go. This video is long overdue, but it is finally time to react to 88 World Records 150cc. Now, I'm definitely not going to retain all of this, but I will pick up on some important things and just like get an idea of what the best lines in the world look like for all the tracks. I have watched all the 200cc world records and this is one of my most requested videos. People have been asking since I made that video to do the 150cc records and I wanted to wait until more of the DLC tracks were out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 96 world record reaction video for 200cc since it will be three new waves have came out since the last time we reviewed all the tracks and I'm really looking forward to that but for now 88 tracks really happy to see the bitty buggy and I've noticed the Australians are dominating the wave 5 world records it's really cool to see so nasty look at that low trick I cannot I thought they were gonna miss it what you can cut that you can jump over the wall okay I'm learning new stuff already and this is really cool how you can do the double trick there. I learned that recently. It's been super helpful, saves quite a bit of time. And one common thing I'm seeing is like a, after a orange main turbo, there'll be, you know, a, a jump uh, plus a direction followed by a neutral jump slide and then a counter like drift into the opposite direction to get a main turbo on a straightaway. That is really common. And it's interesting to see like drifting but not even getting a trick off the ramp. I guess like drifting off ramps is better than just going straight. I'm, I, that's what it seems like. Another Bitty Buggy world record. Two for two Bitty Buggy so far. This one is by Army, the French player who has dominated the game for a long time. I've seen Army's world records plenty of times in the past and I have never gone through all the world records. I've seen various ones on YouTube throughout the years but this is gonna be so informative and I'm just gonna see if I can pick up on the trends of what the most common playstyle is for drifting mechanics, low tricks, and shortcuts. Shroomless shortcuts are gonna be huge in this. Yeah, the, the, the jump and then the neutral slide opposite direction, then start your drift, counter direction, knee turbo on straightaways, it's really common. We're seeing lots of that. I don't know like what the terminology is. I'm just making it up. <laughs> Snaking! Look at that. Oh, beautiful soft drifting. Wow. And I mean, you know, it's very fitting that we see Daisy on Daisy Cruiser with the world record. You love to see it. More snaking. Wow. This is a really fun section to, sh to snake on. I don't know if it's faster to snake with the teddy buggy versus the bitty buggy. It feels a little faster when I try snaking in that portion of the track, but the bitty buggy just has such a high main turbo stat. All right, good table evasion. Can't quite snake the same way there. The laps are a little bit different because of the tables, and that is such an interesting mushroom spot. I guess maybe you can charge some of your main turbo in the air while you're mushrooming because of the prolonged amount of time in the air. And a little uh, Kuzan slide at the end, beautiful record. <laughs> this is done with the Matt Me from Wii Sports, the ultra hidden boss. Matt is the the biggest the, the, the biggest enemy, the most notable me probably that exists. It's either Matt from Wii Sports or it's Poofesher's hamburger me, beef boss. It's one or the other, the most iconic me's that exist. Now this is going to be a hilarious record, not only because of the Pac-Man amiibo suit, but just the fact that it's with this combo. This is a full speed combo. I mean, we're, we're looking at just straightaways. I mean, it's, it's even faster than snaking, apparently. Just, just driving straight. And it's the same way online. I know this combo is really good online for this specific track. It very much brings me back to the Spear days in Mario Kart Wii, where this was one of the only tracks in the game, along with Peach Gardens, that were done with automatic drift instead of manual. Because you can wheelie and turn and not lose any speed on automatic. One of the few benefits. Incredible record. What was so interesting about the Daisy Cruiser record to me was just the fact how there was a mushroom used at the very start. And I knew that was common on 200cc, so I'm really gonna be paying attention to how much 
mushrooms are used at the very start of these time trial build records, it really shows that the startup boost is not super fast in this game. And sometimes I guess the beginning of races just put you in a little bit of an awkward alignment so the main turbo helps you start a drift and get your speed going quicker. So yeah, Moonview Highway, hilarious record. There's really not too much to take from this one. Granted, I do not mushroom up the slope like that. I like to chain main turbos, but that seems like it really works. Just like Athens Dash, we have another world record from the Australian player Panda. And oh, starting a drift into the sink. Oh, starting a drift off of the slope to land on the low trick ramp and Releasing a main turbo on the sponge, but not getting the trickable section at the beginning of the sponge, and then switching directions in midair to start a drift and getting a purple main turbo. What is this run so far? This is craziness. This right here is just making me realize how bad I am at this track. This is definitely one of the tracks I need the most practice on, and that was really interesting. Hitting the wall, I wonder if that's faster to hit the wall. I guess we'll find out lap two and three when we see it again. And that is one of the reasons we need to watch all three laps, because the coins make things different. There's gonna be things that we don't know are faster or not, and we're like, is that a mistake? But if we see it multiple times, we know it is faster, most likely. So we gotta watch every single lap, and sometimes the shroom strategies change between laps. So we'll be taking notes on everything today and learning as much as we can. At the, oh, that was a crazy shortcut. Oh, that was beautiful. And then look at this. No mushrooms left, and hitting the wall again on the off-road shortcut. I'm guessing that you like, kind of like launch off the wall and it helps you get past a little bit of the off-road that maybe your back wheels might hit otherwise. And I'm guessing a trick off the um, faucet. Okay, yep, and then a low trick followed by a high trick and another low trick. This is a glorious run. This makes me want to practice this track, though that maneuver looks really difficult. Cause I mean, okay, do they do shrimless again? Do they do shrimless? Nasty. That is just so unbelievably satisfying to watch. That's my favorite shortcut I've seen so far today because I did not realize you could do that on 150cc. And I don't know if I'd want to go for that in Worldwides, but it is incredible to see. How was that even a trick? That makes no sense. What a run. That's my favorite one so far. The Athens shortcut was really cool, but that takes the cake. The second Wave 5 DLC Cup, LA Laps. I've never watched this world record. And the squeaky clean sprint one, I watched it when it first came out. And the record I had downloaded, you could do that one mushroom? Oh my gosh. Whoa, going really wide. Sorry, I'm trying to take this in before I start talking again. That's the busted off-road shortcut. But anyway, the squeaky clean sprint record was 1.6 seconds faster than the one I downloaded on the first week. So it just shows how much the strategies have improved over just the first month of the tracks being out. So only one mushroom left. There's been some really cool shortcuts through the off-road, maximizing the distance cut, as well as a little cool shroomless off-road skip. We'll be seeing more of that at the end. Wow, they dive down really early. I guess that's to start your drift early. And then, interesting enough, here, I mean, you're not going through the grass shortcut shroomless there, and I thought that was faster, but I'm guessing it's not. And then a little sidewalk shortcut a trick off the ramp. Your boost compounds with your main turbo and your trick in this game, so it's really good to main turbo off of ramps. I'm seeing that a lot in these world records. And, oh, that was weird. One of the reasons I wanted to wait to make this video is because I really didn't play almost any 150cc until last year, and then I started getting into it, and now I'm almost exclusively playing 150cc, and I'm starting to appreciate 150cc uh, for all of the item strategy as opposed to 200cc which is mainly about just going as fast as possible and hoping not to get screwed over by the lag. The mushroom at the end and the sidewalk shortcut. I love this one and a nice slip drift off the ending portion. Some snaking at the end. It is bitty buggy takeover today. Just like squeaky clean sprint we got another uh, streetle world record. Roller wheels and no mushroom used at the start. I was kind of expecting it. But I guess there are quite a few good off-road spots to use the mushroom. And there's gonna be a shortcut here. No, going for the coins, interesting. Okay, I'm assuming we're gonna see that shortcut. The shroomless little, uh, I don't even know what you call it, like the little dirt ride, I, I have no idea. But we're gonna see it lap two and three, I guarantee it. So uh, yeah, you can cut that corner pretty tight with the mushroom, nice uh, purple main turbo chain. 
I know they're called like super and ultra mini turbos, but I just like to call them by the color. <laughs> I, I just, what do I call it? Blue, orange, and purple mini turbos. Just keep it simple. And... The mushroom is used there? Wow, that means we're not going to be seeing that Shroomless Shortcut. Instead, we're seeing the Shroomless Shortcut there, and that was super clean. That actually looks like it could be very useful online. That is something I need to learn. And a slide, followed by a Counter Drift Mean Turbo trick off the ramp. And I love the uh, the hopping to go diagonal and then drifting the opposite direction to get the blue Mean Turbos on the straightaways. That is incredible. And yeah, I guess that is the shroom spot. I'm very surprised by that. I thought we'd be riding the edge, the dirt, the dirt rail shortcut. And then that was nowhere to be seen in this run. Maybe it's on the 200cc run. I'm not entirely sure, but looks like they're holding a left drift, but they're holding right before they go off the ramp so they don't fling into the off-road to the left. Really cool run. Super surprising. Just like Moonview Highway, we have another Alberto world record, and Alberto has the most world records of any player in the game. He's been dominating Mario Kart 8 Deluxe time trials for quite some time. Oh, he almost fell off there. Going for some coins, we're seeing a Villager world record, really cool, and it brings a tear to my eye seeing all of the Bitty Buggy world records. He just like restarted his drift there, that was weird. I'm gonna pay attention, see if he does that lap two and three. And that's funny watching him just level out on the on the um, stream section and not even drifting there, J just just holding what left, that was so weird. He cut that super inside, okay. And the waterfall shortcut. Couldn't tell if that was an orange or purple main turbo. A little bit tough. Some nice slides. The neutral jump slide maintains your speed. While if you don't have main turbo boost and you just press like left or right plus jump at the same time, nice streamless cut. Oh, that was so good. So he, he doesn't reset his drift there. I guess he had to just fix his alignment on lap one. Really interesting. But that part looks super fun. Anyway, yeah, you never want to like just be on a straightaway, not boosting, and then like press like left or right and jump at the same time. And, and, and then you lose a lot of speed by doing that. And then you have to, you know, slide the opposite direction to get a main turbo. You, you always want to jump and then as you land you slide and then you maintain your speed that is the correct way to do it and he is executing that to perfection on these beginning straightaways and once again I keep thinking he's gonna fall off and here's a shroomless shortcut releasing your orange main turbo and then getting through the grass to start a blue main turbo to get the trick off the ramp that is something I need to learn that is gonna be really useful online we've already learned like four online strategies and we just started watching these now, I wanted to start with the Wave 5 runs because I feel like those would be the runs that you guys, along with myself, will learn the most considering these tracks are newer and the strategies have changed so much over just the last month. But we're going through every single track today, so we have a lot to take in. I think this is like the third Panda World Record. It's Pandemonium here on Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Wave 5 DLC. I'm kind of curious, how many World Records does Panda have? There's just been an insane amount of Panda lately. Wow, how do- what? That beginning really blew my mind, and I'm kind of upset because I already watched it and I'm not gonna be able to see it again because it already happened. Wow, that this is insane. This is one of my worst tracks. Watching the world records is really making me learn which tracks I need practice on. This one and Squeaky Clean Sprint, I don't play the track anything like the world records do, and that means I have a lot I can practice and improve on. Some more snaking. The Bitty Buggy is taking over. Are we gonna see any Teddy Buggy today on 150cc? I'm curious. So only one mushroom left. I'm trying to think of where this mushroom is gonna be used. It's probably just gonna be used where the water is coming up after this giant U-turn. It's gonna probably be right here and I'm guessing it's gonna be like a purple main turbo held the entire time into the glider ramp. No. Oh, I would have never predicted that. See, like a blue main turbo release and starting the opposite direction, getting another blue main turbo, and then motion gliding, motion gliding all the way back to safety. Never ceases to amaze me, all of these world records. So uh, no trick there, just holding it until you get the purple. This is like the New York Minute terrain. It's super slidey with a rainy sort of texture. So this is insane snaking. This is so cool. No mushroom here, no mushrooms left. And there is one more shortcut on this level. It actually is right here on the left. You can cut over the hedge and land in the grass and mushroom, but it doesn't save enough compared to these other shortcuts apparently. 
And, oh, unlike the last time out of the ice rink, he did a trick instead of going for a purple wing turbo. I love that. The, the counter hopping into the main turbo, beautiful. Another pandable record, and we're seeing the mushroom used right at the beginning. And a nice slip drift and the motion glider. Is the 200cc shortcut, is it used on 150? I'm really curious. All right, we're getting some low tricks off the moles, and that time, the last two, he actually jumped onto the mound and then tricked off the bottom of it, which was really cool. Wow. I'm really curious, like, how many of these strategies are actually viable with the Teddy Buggy, because with the Bitty Buggy, it is insane. And I think that, like, online, one of the disadvantages is if you're snaking everywhere, it makes you more susceptible to get hit by stuff. So, it almost helps more just to, like, Go in a straight line and just be super aware of your surroundings and be focusing on looking back a lot. I mean, think about it. Like, nobody really uses the bitty buggy online. Oh, wow. I don't take the top there. I always go down the middle. And I guess if you hold left while in a right drift, you can actually make that corner. That is really cool. So we already know where the last mushroom is going to be used at the end over the grass. But I'm always curious to see, like, how they optimize it in these runs. Orange main turbo and a blue off the ramp. And let's see what they do. Wow, you can skip that shroom list for the second grass patch with a purple main turbo. Really cool. Getting an orange main turbo there instead of snaking up the ending. Really creative main turbo strats. Nice. We got the first Mr. Scooty world record of the day. And it is by Alberto, of course. Now, this is the track where I've learned to just bag. Bagging works way better for me on this track. I'm going to be doing it every single time. This has been one of the tracks I struggled with the most. Wow, you can cut all of that with one mushroom. Okay, I need to see how he does that lap two and three. That was extreme. That is always a two mushroom shortcut for me. And landing in the drift. I like to do that, landing in the left drift. Really good. Okay. Beautiful. Mesmerizing watching these world records. They're so clean. Yeah, okay, so what he does is right before his uh, his main turbo boost runs out, he releases the main turbo and jumps, and he's able to jump before he hits the off-road so he doesn't get slowed down at all. That is really good. I remember when this game first came out, watching the world records, the main turbo strats, the sliding strategies, all of it was extremely basic, and I thought the world records were like boring to watch. And now it is completely the opposite. I'm learning something new every single 10 seconds, sometimes even less. Orange main turbo, and then no slide here, I'm guessing. Oh, the, the Kuzan slide. What am I witnessing? Excuse me? Ancient tires. Koopa Clown. What's the glider? Plane glider, of course. Koopa Clown? Oh, I love these little uh, <laughs> these little rudders on the side <laughs> when you're in the air. That's so cool. All right. This is this is pretty epic. Getting the low tricks off the side, cutting it super tight, drifting off the mount. I don't even think they got a meter bow. And wow, that was a clean double shortcut. This is perplexing me more than any run I've watched so far. Why are we watching? Oh, maybe only the Koopa Clown can do that. I, I just don't understand why we're watching a Koopa Clown ancient tire world record. Does it have something to do with the terrain and its slidiness? I don't know. I, I, I really don't. This is insane. This is madness. It is one really cool thing about the records. You're seeing a lot of different combos overall. I mean, you're even seeing, seeing different wheel types, you're seeing different character types. In Mario Kart Wii, uh, considering how online everyone uses the same combo, you actually get a decent amount of diversity for time trials because of the glitches and some interesting things like uh, some tracks are more speed focused, there's some off-road focused tracks. 
but this is like obviously way more diverse when it comes to the combos and a lot of people really appreciate that people like to see the diversity in the combos it's hype you see a lot of different play styles between the vehicles i mean you see the bitty buggy snaking up a storm you see the cyber slick wheels used with the circuit special just driving straight on movie highway and then you're seeing the koopa clown carving it up double shortcut shenanigans on dk summit not even going off the very top but releasing the meter boat halfway up and then catapulting onto the boost ramp. But the most surprising part of this run is the last corner. And just being able to hold a drift like that, pixel perfect. I'm pretty sure this one is Alberto using a different name. But we have our first Teddy Buggy World Record. This is gonna be the most helpful for me considering I use the Teddy Buggy online. I use this exact same combo. And this is just a beautiful combo. It looks cool, everyone loves Yoshi. I don't think anyone's upset that Yoshi is meta and it's comical how few people use Daisy, Peach, and Birdo, despite them all having the exact same stats. There's virtually no benefit to using Yoshi over the other characters, but Yoshi's just the most popular. I was like, how are they gonna hit this? <laughs> I remember watching Enmead's world record reaction video, and he was mind blown by that part. He thought he was witnessing like some sort of glitch, because he didn't even know about the red ramp when he was watching it and it was just pure confusion on his face, but I'm, I'm aware that these records, they, they don't often show some of these parts that, you know, like that only activates when you hit the question mark box, so I guess, for whatever reason, it doesn't show up on the boost panel, just the way the game's coded. Yeah, I never hit that ramp. I, I always maintain my glider and skip the wooden ramp, but apparently it's faster to hit it, so I gotta watch this again on lap three and really start paying close attention. All right, so I mean, it's a pretty standard run for the most part. The shroom spot is super obvious on this one, and the most important thing about the shroom spot is just being able to cut it as tight as possible so you stick and it fixes your alignment into the glider. And you gotta start it a little bit wide so you can just hit the very lip, and uh, one thing I don't do though is I, I just... Okay, so he starts a drift onto the wooden ramp, even though it doesn't get a mean turbo on it. But one thing I do is I release my mean turbo the second I get out of the shortcut when I mushroom, and he holds it all the way to the glider and then does like some motion glider stuff. Oh, mushroom at the beginning. We have Yoshi, Mr. Scooty this time. Mr. Scooty takeover is coming through. Love to see it. Same stats as the Bitty Buggy, but different hitbox and controls a little bit differently with the drift due to it being a different vehicle style. I think the ATVs have a different drift radius than carts, as well as uh, even outside drift bikes having a different drift radius. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it seems like that just based on the eye test and just playing all the different vehicle styles. Loving the snaking, and this is one of my favorite tracks in the game. Something that I absolutely did not expect, but for some reason, I always do well on this track. It's probably my best track in the game, and I've won this track more than any other track, I would say in races uh, since Wave 4 came out. So I'm very curious to see what strategies I can take advantage of to improve my gameplay on Bangkok Rush here. So far, uh, I mean, I did know about that mushroom strategy. I never mushroom there though. It seems kind of sketchy. It seems a little risky, but I obviously mushroom to take the little gate shortcut. And then here we go. Lap three without any mushrooms. And wow, getting a uh, purple here. Oh, I do not do that. Okay, two purple mean turbos. I generally do orange and blue mean turbos during that section. Gotta learn that, and I'm very curious how they do the mushroom tent section coming up. Wow. Oh, that was just magnificent. They get two super bounces, and when I play this track, I only get one. So I have a lot to learn on this one still. This is really exciting to watch because it being like my best track, the one I win the most, I'm realizing I could get so much better at this track just watching Panda play it here. This one is by Pi or P, I'm not exactly sure. It's a Norwegian player, somebody who I have not seen a world record from today. And this was a pretty big improvement from the last time I've watched this world record. I watched this one quite a few times during the first week DS Mario Circuit came out. And this is one of my favorite tracks from, uh, from Wave 4. Wow. Insane, insanely tight. Um, I mean, lap one's gonna be so much different though with all the points. Already at six coins right now. And this is a little off-road shortcut. You, wow, you can actually go over the grass and not lose speed? Really? How? 
I feel like I've done that before and I always lose speed. I'm super perplexed by that one. All right. And gonna stay to the left of the fireball here and then cut into the right. And this mushroom spot is insane. Cutting inside the rock, it looks really risky. I don't know if I wanna do that online. But I do like charging the mean triple off the ramp from the far left so it leads perfectly into the next drift in the opposite direction. And that was extremely tight, even better than lap one. Now we have lap three, probably gonna see the same strategies as lap two. This is a pretty simplistic track. There's no glider, no underwater, no anti-gravity. Just how I like it. <laughs> I feel like the booster course pass in general just has less of all of that stuff. It's still there. You just don't see as much anti-gravity. And yeah, this is, this is super satisfying to watch. The ending is my favorite part of the level. And I have to try this grass strategy. Like, that is cutting it way tighter than I do. And, oh, getting a blue major with the end. Nice. Back to Yoshi, Bitty Buggy. And, wow, I mean, it's just one thing I've noticed is Yoshi does not only dominate online, but also time trials. The Yoshi meta is real, and I'm not going to lie. I almost... Oh, a mushroom there. Okay, no shrimpless shortcut. I almost hope that Nintendo... Oh, you can do... What? What? I don't even understand what I just watched. I almost hope Nintendo does not update the character stats in Wave 6 because I want Yoshi to reign supreme forever. Yoshi could be the new Funky Kong, I do not care. Granted, it was different in Mario Kart Wii because there was no Funky Kong counterpart. There were some good characters, heavyweights like the Mi and Rosalina, really good, but Funky Kong still had the highest speed stat. Maybe like Funky Kong will come out in Wave 6 and he'll be the fastest and that would be funny. I'd be down for that. This right here looks insane. I don't even want to try this. This looks like it could go horrifically wrong and you could end up going vertical and then shooting the opposite direction into the mechanical piranha plane. I just don't even get what I'm watching right now. That doesn't look anything like the DK Summit section of the half pipe. And I mean, it's kind of the same in Mario Kart Wii. It looks way different between Waluigi Stadium and DK Summit. So it's the same way in this game. Like in DK Summit, you had the crazy wraparound, and we're not seeing a turn skip style shortcut here, but we're seeing the most magnificent booster riding of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That seemed a little bit slower than last couple laps. Still really good. Getting the low trick. One of my favorite records I've seen so far. So satisfying. I love how they put that boost panel there. That was such a nice touch. And the anti-gravity section, useless as per usual, and an orange wing triple to end it. Yes, more Yoshi Teddy Bug here. We're gonna see snaking. This is actually gonna give me a lot of insight if snaking is faster with this combo, and it looks like it is. Granted, it does look more difficult. And Alberto has mastered the Yoshi Teddy Buggy combo and the whole game. But seriously, this is the second Yoshi Teddy Buggy, and they both were Alberto. And we are seeing coins being picked up while snaking. Incredible, some motion glider, and hitting all the rings, of course. They're like boost panels in the air. It reminds me of Diddy Kong Racing. Purple Mini Turbo here, for sure. This track does not get chosen much online lately. I have not played this track in many, many weeks. In fact, it's absurd how long it's been since I've played this track. I cannot think of another track in the game that uh, I haven't played for as long as, like, I mean, this, like I said, it's been so long, I, like, almost forgot the layout of the track. Alberto is helping me remember it. One of the big takeaways I've had, we, we've gone through four cups after this one, one of the big takeaways I've had is just how overwhelmingly complicated these world records are. Like, a lot of the stuff they're doing looks really hard, and I don't know... What? You don't even go on the green one? I'm learning so much. But a lot of it looks really hard and, and it, not really something I'm going to be able to implement. But still, I'm hoping that I'm able to download even just 10% of what I'm watching or even 2%. So it makes me better because by the time this video comes out, this tournament will already have taken place. But I'm actually participating in JP Gibboner's Ragnarok tournament. He's giving away $10,000. And I got to practice. I got to practice in any way I can. See how far I can make it. Am I going to win? Absolutely not, but if I can make it far, it would make for a hype video, so I want to be able to pull it off for you guys. So if I'm watching all the 150cc lines, learning all the shortcuts, and learning all of the ways to maximize my main turbo potential, I have a better chance. Mr. Scooty, we're starting to see 
almost as much uh, Mr. Scooty as we are. You could trick off that. We're almost seeing as much Mr. Scooty as the Bitty Buggy, and I'm pretty happy about it. It's it's making me wanna relive my Mr. Scooty days. I used to use Donkey Kong, Mr. Scooty, Double Shroom Shortcut. Okay, where's the last mushroom gonna be used then? I'm really curious. But yeah, I used the roller wheels like everyone, and then uh, Mr. Scooty was my favorite. I liked it because of the more slender hitbox compared to the Bitty Buggy with Donkey Kong just felt bulky. I don't feel that way too much anymore. I mean, with the Teddy Buggy, I'm just so used to it, and I love the Teddy Buggy online, but this is making me want to relive the Mr. Scooty days. Yoshi Mr. Scooty, maybe I'll try it out. Maybe that'll be my next video online. Let me know what you guys want to see from an online video coming up. Oh, that was nice. No trick off the staircase, interesting. But yeah, I need to start making more online worldwide sessions so Rod doesn't beat me to 30k. That can't happen. Orange main turbo. Blue main turbo. More blue main turbos. And gotta love the, uh, the realignment and the slide to be able to squeak out these main turbos. Very advanced strategies and difficult to pick up on. It takes a lot of time playing the game to where you get to the point where you have every inch of the track memorized and you know how to just squeak out these moon turbos and use every bit of the track to your advantage and all the hopping is uh it's quite entertaining not gonna lie quite entertaining i wonder what nintendo thinks of this when they watch the world records and they see all the snaking like this like this is some insane snaking this is like some mario kart ds snaking almost what what wow so, mean triple early, then start hopping, prolong your speed, and preserve your uh, the duration of your, you know, your boost. I mean, the off-road physics in this game are really weird. What can I say? Uh, what? And then you just mushroom late. I was not expecting that. I thought the mushroom would be used in an entirely different spot, but wow. Peach, Biddy Buggy. We're back to the Biddy Buggy, and it's nice to see Peach and not Yoshi. We're getting a little bit of character diversity, even though they have the same stats, so it does, it's not really diversity, but uh, cosmetically, you know, visually. Nice. It's so interesting seeing that sort of strategy implemented there. It's almost like what they do on DS Wario Stadium before the ramps. Pop, pop, pop. Opposite directions. And as long as you're still in your main turbo, you can slide off of that, you can drift off of that. That looks so insanely risky. This is cool. Really threading the needle on this one. I mean, sometimes half of their wheels are over the edge. And that's something you can't really do with uh, Mr. Scooty. So I think that's the main reason you see the biggie buggy here over Mr. Scooty. It's a little bit easier to pull off these strategies. When you have the edge, the Bitty Buggy has more surface area and it works your advantage. All right. So the double hop and then going the opposite way. I always go to the right, but that is a really tricky strategy to take the left route, which is a little bit faster. It's a little bit more inside. And it's been really cool seeing the rail shortcut. I always do the rail shortcut on the left, but they go for it on the right. Really good run. <laughs> We got the teddy buggy, but not how we usually see it. Dry Bowser, cushion wheels, because the cushion wheels are good in the air, and this track is all in the air. So, everyone at home, I need your guys' opinions. I'm gonna be reading the comment section. Let me know what the most surprising world record was to you. What world record did you watch and you learned the most, and you felt the most mind blown? For me, it's a little bit tough, I think I'm going to reserve my judgment until the end of the video to share that. But there's been quite a few that have stood out to me so far. It's a really nice run. This track is pretty simple. Wow, those slides. Oh my gosh, what is going on? See, sometimes, like like right there, he like jumps over the glider. Doesn't even do a trick off that. Doesn't doesn't do a mean turbo boost off that. Like, like that. that's kind of like what they do when, they, uh, when people are entering the Waluigi Pinball Cannon. They just hit the booster, and then they jump into the glider to activate the glider faster. And then I love hopping there, but one thing I don't do is I don't hop off of it and then start a drift and then, you know, release the drift after my glider deploys. Like, I don't do it that way. I just hop and then I trick, so that, that's interesting to learn. And then the extra speed probably helps make some of these strategies possible. Super high speed combo. 
and it's a really wide track. The corners are not difficult on this track at all. And look at that, it's, it's almost like he starts to drift, but then the glider deploys and then it cancels the drift. I'm just surprised he doesn't jump straight. Like he like jumps and he turns and then it activates. It, it just looks weird to me. I guess it might have something to do with the motion glider for sure. I mean, let me check. Is this a motion glider record? The answer is yes, but I'm gonna look anyway. Yes, it is motion glider. I think every single record that uses the glider is a motion glider record. Motion gliding saves a lot of time. It's just a little tricky to pull off. And this part's weird. Oh, got the trick there. This part's, oh, never mind. He's, okay, so he was doing some weird slide stuff before. And this time he's doing what I thought he would do on the other times, but I guess you just can't go hit the pipe if you do it that way. So only on lap three, he drifts off of it. I'm always surprised by these records. I am loving all of these Yoshi Teddy Buggy World records. I'm gonna be paying close attention to this one because I'll be able to learn a lot considering I am not switching my combo. This is my combo forever, unless Nintendo rebalances the stats. This, this is actually the longest track in the game. I'm pretty sure it's two minutes and 22.9 seconds. It's even longer than it is in Mario Kart Wii. The same thing goes for DK Summit. It's really surprising to me. It doesn't feel as long when I play it. I think it's because it's just so good that I'm always enjoying myself. I'm not even thinking about the track being boring. Often the tracks that feel really long to me are the ones where you're just not doing anything for a long period of time. And that's what happens on a lot of the Mario Kart Wii custom tracks is they are super long and they have sections where you're just going straight and you're doing nothing for a long time. Rock Rock Mountain is a little bit of a victim to that. I mean, if it feels like there's, oh, major error. But Rock Rock Mountain felt a lot longer than Maple Tree Way. And just looking at the time here, I mean, it's a full 15 seconds faster than Maple Tree Way. Maple Tree Way is one of my favorite tracks. Like, I love it more and more each time. It's pretty difficult, and I feel like this section right here has been made so much easier, and I'm not upset about it at all. And Mario Kart Wii, it, it's glitchy, it's sketchy. Bad things happen to you on that U-turn. But in this game, you can take it tight and not worry about anything. The half pipe functions a lot differently in this game. I really like how big of a boost you get out of the half pipes. And wow, what? You could just get so much air. That's, that, I wonder how much time that saves. That looks really cool. That's been the most surprising thing of this run so far. In Mario Kart Wii though, I do love on that corner, you can go up top and then just jet down on the other side and it doesn't work the same on this game. Blue Main Turbo, I feel like I play this track pretty well, but I always go wide for that boost panel and I need to stop doing that because World Record does not do that at all. And it's important just to memorize these strategies so I'm taking optimal lines and not losing time for no reason. So I'm still learning quite a bit on this one. And I always go to the side, but that's only to get an item box. Yeah, they drift even when they don't get me turbos off trick ramps. All right, Amsterdam drift, Yoshi Mr. Scooty snaking. So the city tracks have the most snaking by far, like London Loop and Singapore Speedway really stood out to me as having an absurd amount of snaking. We saw quite a bit on Daisy Cruiser as well. And yeah, these city tracks are just kind of wide and they have a lot of flat sections not too much anti-gravity. I feel like snicking on anti-gravity is not good. Like it doesn't work as well. I guess we'll find out later. We'll get some more anti-gravity tracks in the mix. And this is just speed demon levels of quick. Not at 10 coins yet, still only at nine. Where is the 10th coin gonna be? It's gonna be on the surfboard. Very cool. All right. More snicking, I mean. Streamless shortcut? No, I mean, I guess that counts. It's the tiniest streamless shortcut of all time. <laughs> Reminds me of the beginning LA Laps one. It's just crazy snaking everywhere. Not opting for the surfboard this time. No surfboard here. I didn't even see him get that mean turbo. That was so quick. I don't even know if he got it. Purple. Nice. And just keeping straight alignment to maximize speed. And the snaking continues. Are we gonna see the Womp shortcut? I really hope so. I doubt it though. I highly doubt it. Yeah, the Thwomp, the Womp is not even down. I always call them Thwomps. Wow, a purple there. Okay, maybe the Womp shortcut is in 200cc. I can't remember. 
I've gotten a lot better at that part. I remember watching the world record a while ago on this track and being like, oh, that's how you do that. And I've implemented that into my online races. It definitely helps a lot. Snake, snake, snake. And yet another Panda world record. I, I think Panda is the best at the booster course pass. That, that is my take so far. So this track will be a little different with the shrimp strategy considering lap three is totally different. Just like Calamari Desert. Nintendo threw some tricks up their sleeves. This was the most like fun track to react to just because it was shocking what they did on lap three. And I mean, in Mario Kart DS and Mario Kart Wii, the porch section to the castle, going up to the very far side there, it was shown in the game, but you couldn't drive on it. It was just there in the background, out of bounds region. So it's really cool how they incorporated that. Where is the lap three mushroom spot gonna be? It's probably just gonna be at the shortcut backwards, but you never know. I've been surprised so many times today. Nothing would like really shock me. I mean, it could be used at the beginning for all I know. Nice little trick. We're gonna get some mole tricks here. Two of them? No, just one, going inside. That is one thing I gotta improve on too, is like just, just going inside instead of going for tricks or boosters that are almost like traps to get you to go outside. So not going for a purple, instead doing an orange followed by a purple and using the very edge to get a little bit of elevation and charge the drift faster to squeak out that purple. Really impressive stuff. And so good at landing on the correct angle to quickly squeeze out blooming turbos after trick ramps. Like that is a common theme in these world records. We're seeing a lot of that. And I'm starting to pick up on the play style of it all. But like I said, it's gonna take time to learn how to properly implement all this. Whoa, tricking off that one. That was some insane motion gliding. That was some of the craziest motion gliding we've seen so far. And here's the last mushroom spot. So it was predictable after all. And orange made turbo? Yeah, orange into blue into blue. Okay, nice. We have Alberto Car 8 Deluxe. Another Alberto world record, this time with the Biddy Buggy. And are, are we seeing left? Oh, it's the left path. Okay, it's probably because there are three coins total, it looks like. Yeah, and then I'm really surprised. I'm, I mean, I, I, I guess it's worth it. You know, coins are really important. And I mean, this just shows how important coins are going, taking the wide route at the beginning with the train, taking the wide route there to get the coins, and hopping out of the off-road, which is what we saw multiple times today. Very common strategy. Hopping right before the off-road runs out. I'm trying to get better at this beginning section. It feels so overscaled on 150cc. Like, you're just getting main turbos on straightaways and just able to really use the terrain to advantage in a way that you wouldn't expect. Like that main triple strat at the beginning there is not predictable to me at all. Oh, you trick off the side? Wow, why did I never think of that? I always go off the top and like drift off it and it's pretty slow. Oh, tricking off the side again? I'm playing this track all wrong. No wonder why I do badly at this one. But yeah, like, the orange main turbo into the counter hop, the double counter hop into the blue main turbo, into the reset, into the purple. Like, that is very, that is very difficult to memorize. It's gonna take some time for me to get that one down, but it does make sense, you know. The orange main turbo is so much longer than the blue main turbo. It's probably like, I don't know if this is true or not. It feels like it's like triple the length of it or something. And the snaking is very satisfying. And not using the glider, I would not have expected. This run blew my mind. This track is more interesting to me now. Nice, the Cat Cruiser makes an appearance. And this has the exact same stats as the Teddy Buggy, to my knowledge. But I think the drift radius is slightly different. Could be wrong on that. But the hitbox is definitely different. And I totally see why this is being used. That was beautiful. But anyway, I, I think it's just because you can literally have two thirds of the vehicle over the edge, but not be counted out of bounds and that allows you to cut things slightly more inside than the other vehicle hitboxes. This track always has an edge that you're riding, and this edge I fall off on too much. I've gotten better at it, but it's a little bit scary, and wow. Are we gonna see the 200cc cut? Are we gonna see that used on 150? I'm super curious. 
I remember when I found the shortcut and I was just like, how is this a thing when the ending shortcut that was in Mario Kart 7 isn't a thing? Like, I cannot believe it. They're not doing it. Yeah, yeah, he's not doing it. Okay. We're seeing a pretty standard route. It's just faster to do this. It's really interesting how on 200cc you see that shortcut, but not on 150. And, oh, okay, I need to learn to do that. You can just trick off the sides. You don't even have to go over the top. That is really good to know. Not, see, once again, not opting for the middle and being fooled by the conveyor belts, just going super inside instead. And not even going for the glider. Drifting off of this, yep. Holding a drift. Oh, oh, this is just clean. We're gonna have two wheels off the edge. And I did not expect the mushroom to be used there. I thought it would be used on the very last corner. And oh, finishing into darkness. Another Panda world record. It's either Alberto or Panda, like half the time. Mushroom at the start, okay. I, I can't really figure out why on some tracks they do that and others they don't. I'm guessing it's tracks that have very small shortcuts and then have like awkward beginning sections where it's like, it just makes sense to get rid of the beginning section, not have to worry about having to find a way to get me turbo started without losing too much time. And it just, it works out, I mean. On 200cc, you see that strategy implemented like every single world record, it seemed like. And, and here we've seen it probably like three or four times overall. So, I mean, bitty buggy snaking action. You know, same <laughs> same sort of like strategies we're seeing on most of these world records. Just crazy snaking action. There's way more snaking on 150cc than 200cc overall. That's what it feels like. And another thing I'm noticing is on 200cc, we saw quite a few baby world records where, you know, it's Baby Daisy or Rosalina or Peach, and I don't think I've seen a single baby world record so far. At all. We see Yoshi half the time. In fact, we've barely seen any heavyweights. We saw Matt the Me and we saw Dry Bowser. I feel like that was pretty much it. I expected to see... I mean, I think Rock Rock Mountain might have been a heavyweight too, but there's not been that many. Cool, that's done. I'm not a huge fan of that track. Whoa, something different. Pipe frame, haven't seen that yet. Tanuki Mario, haven't seen him yet. Roller wheels, we see this every single time. Wow. This track right here, people said that Nintendo didn't try at all on this track, and they were right. But however, you can't deny that this is one of the most popular tracks in the game. People would rather play this track than almost any track except for DK Summit and Excite Bike Arena. This track, I play online every single time I boot up my Switch. And like I said before, I have not played Singapore Speedway in four weeks at least. So that, that just shows the hype around this track. Even though they didn't give it the, you know, the, the, the like treatment that Donut Plains 3 got, you don't have to mess with classics. This track is glorious, and it's pretty simple. I already knew this one. I've seen the world record quite a few times, and it's a pretty simple track, beautiful track. I love the yellow sand. That is the main takeaway I have from this track. Wow, I do not get a purple main turbo on that. That first corner, you get a purple main turbo. I gotta keep that in mind. And orange main turbo, that was weird. Wasn't expecting that alignment, but it worked. And same strategy we've seen a few times, just releasing that purple main turbo right before the mushroom ends and jumping over the end of the off-road. Really cool, love that. Major shout outs to ARMY for using Birdo. We never see Birdo. I don't think we've seen Daisy except for on Daisy Cruiser. We've seen Peach like once and we've seen Yoshi 100,000 times. He almost flipped the entire bitty buggy. I was ready for Birdo to wipe out. That was almost an accident on the race course. Really cool though. I mean, the motion gliding is silly. <laughs> Almost feels like a glitch because it's so ridiculous to watch. And once again, main turboing off of ramps. I gotta remember how important that is. One of the things I don't understand is just like how sometimes these world records are just like drifting off of ramps. They don't even get the main turbo and they just drift off of ramps and they trick. Is like, is that faster than just going normal off the ramp? I think. It's probably the same speed, and it's really just to have a good alignment to have a opposite drift to me turbo in succession when you land. That's my prediction, but I'm not 100% sure. 
and gotta love the double counter hop into the snaking, seen that many times over. And I kind of am starting to understand why a lot of the same people have world records. It's like three three people dominate and have like over half of the world records, if not like two thirds of them. And it's because they've mastered these mechanics and they are so good at soft drifting and motion gliding and all of these hopping techniques to maximize your momentum and your, uh, your speed. It, 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 it's just like, you can apply these tactics to every single track in the game just about. Mushroom at the start and jump into the glider like I was talking about earlier. And we're back to Mr. Scooty. I am loving how it's not all Biddy Buggy or all Mr. Scooty. There is a pretty good mix, Biddy Buggy more popular, but Mr. Scooty making its name on the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe World Records here. Some more main turboing off of ramps. Doesn't matter if it's a boost ramp or just a regular stunt trick ramp. Main turboing nonetheless, and I need to remember to do that. I always forget that's a thing. Holding your main turbo so far that you're past the boost panel, waiting until it runs out, then releasing it, and just soaring up the upward section. More snaking, very satisfying. And snaking is better with the Teddy Buggy. We learned that at Singapore Speedway, but it is much better with the Biddy Buggy and Mr. Scooty. And it looks like he's holding down, or sorry, up, up, left, diagonal in the cannon. That's what it seems like. And then he like kind of levels out right when he gets out of it. Starting a little wide then cutting inside there. Some slides to get the right angle and then cutting it as inside as possible. I think there was a little bit of brake drifting involved there. I don't have my TV uh, too loud right now, so I can't hear the braking, the braking necessarily. But that's my prediction. It did look like absurdly tight for like how difficult it is to actually cut that tight in reality. It's like a 270 degree corner. Yeah, definitely holding up and then leveling out at the end. And I always do this part correct. Granted, I don't think I get double orange. I feel like I normally get an orange and then a blue, so I need to focus on the double orange next time. This track has no shortcuts. It has no op uh, alternate routes. I feel like this track was like one of the most popular casual Mario Kart tracks of all time. Whenever you'd see like Mario Kart videos of uh, ranking all the tracks, in the franchise this would be like at the top of everyone's list and now like people don't even pick it almost at all it's definitely not a favorite i feel like people are over it and people are starting to realize like this track is kind of overhyped i love this track not overhyped in fact underhyped sydney sprint ladies and gentlemen with yoshi teddy buggy i love to see it and did he even get the main turbo i don't i don't think he did i don't know maybe <laughs> um I would say that lap one and two are the best and lap three is underwhelming. This section I struggle with. That does not look easy to do. I always feel like I'm a little lost on that part and I don't I don't really maintain my speed that well. So I, I gotta figure out how to do all those counter hops and squeeze out the blue meter bows. It's tough though, it's tough. These world records are insane. I mean, it's mostly by the same people but we do have the occasional random person who, who shows up and I'm like, often it's like a Japanese player. I check the world record page and they only have one world record. I'm so I have no idea who this is. Purple main turbo and a double blue main turbo. Wow. That was like the ending of Wario Stadium where you don't even do a trick. You just release your main turbo in midair. There's so many different mechanics being utilized that I don't fully understand. Also, whenever I do that, I have a hard time keeping my shortcut. Nice, nice. I only do that on 200cc. Maybe I should start going for it. But anyway, like whenever I do that grass shortcut before the glider, like I never, ever like land it nearly as smoothly. I, I start it and I always get a bunch of air and then it's like I start bouncing. And if I use my mushroom too late, it just like shoots me straight because my drift, you know, gets canceled. It's just harder than he, they make it look. They make it look so easy. Yeah, we're gonna start drift off this. And barely, oh, clipped the wall with the front two tires. Very surprising. And mushroom at the end. Panda, again, Biddy Buggy Master over here. And I'm very excited for this one. 
one of my favorite tracks in the game, no question. Absolutely incredible what Nintendo did with this. Extremely unmemorable track from the GBA, one of my least favorites. And I had no excitement when it was returning. And then we played it, and we learned about the massive shortcut. And we're just like, wow, Nintendo put a shortcut that is bigger than the big blue shortcut into the game? I'm not kidding, like, it's literally bigger. It's the most busted shortcut in the game. It doesn't look like it, but the big blue shortcut, you travel very slow in the air. And this, you soar over at frightening speeds. Mushrooming! Past the snowman, past the tree, visiting the penguins. And I've hit the penguins one too many times. I still love this track, though. Also, I was thinking, I was like, why do more people not make these reacting to all world record videos? And now I'm realizing how long it takes. I'm an hour and a half into recording and I haven't even got through half the tracks, like not even close. So it's going to be a long day, but I hope you guys are enjoying this and leave a like if you want me to do the 200cc world record reaction when all 96 tracks are out, because I'm planning on doing it and the first one I did was one of my most viewed videos of the year, which was super surprising, so I'm thinking of doing it again. The most surprising part about this run is just releasing the main turbo into the off-road on that section after the ramp. Like, that's just super weird. Also, why did they hop at the end? And now, my favorite track in the game. Definitely top three. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's in contention for it. I feel like you find out what your favorite track is by just like how you feel when it gets voted. And when this and DK Summit and Yoshi Circuit get voted, I get excited to play. Like, I, you know, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. And, you know, when tracks like Water Park get chosen, power off. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, fence cut, insane. I never go for that online. I think I've done it once online. Oh, you could do that! I need to learn this. I love this track. You could do that shroomless. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Wow. These mushroom super bouncing strategies are next level. There's like five of them per lap. And I always do it the opposite direction. I feel like I'm doing that wrong. What? I thought they were going to fall off. Jeez. This is something else. Is this difficult to do? This is so amazing. You get a super bounce off of that. I wonder how much time that saved. This is incredible. Wow. How did I not know about this? That looks hard, too. The way they do that, that, that looks hard. I, I don't want to risk that. They're, like, facing so far to the right, then they, like drift to the right, then they sway out to the left, and they super bounce, and they fix their alignment. This is an absurd record, and this alignment here, they're doing a hard left drift and releasing that late. This person's name was just an underscore, nothing else, Japanese player, and wow! So if you were going so far in one direction while motion gliding for a long period of time and you get a trick, it'll like jolt you forward. I've seen that before on some 200cc records. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what they do on Electrodrome for the crazy shortcut. And then I've also seen it on Merry Mountain as well as Thwomp Ruins. And I'm very proud of myself for remembering that. Also, I wanted to say to everyone in the comment section who helps answer my questions when I'm confused about why the world records do what they do, like hopping at the very end of Snowland, for example, and then like, you know, drifting off of ramps even when they're not getting tricks, and just some of the strategies where they, they are going off a boost ramp and releasing the main turbo in midair. There's so many things that I don't fully understand, so anyone who answers my questions, I just want to give a massive thank you to you, because I will be reading the comments and I'll be trying to take in as much of the information as I can, because I do think the driving mechanics in this game are extremely interesting, and there's a lot of depth to it that people don't appreciate. So I hope you guys at home, oh, that's faster? I thought JP Givener's short told me it wasn't faster. Or was it short cat short? I forget. But I'm pretty sure I watched watched a short and they said that wasn't faster. It's faster. It's in the world record. That is all I have to say. I definitely watched a short that said it's not faster. I'm predicting it was JP short. I'm calling JP out. <laughs> So anyway, and we're gonna see the shortcut again, and the only reason we did not see the shortcut on lap one was because of the coins, but I just thought it wasn't faster on 150, and look how early they used the mushroom and then released the mean turbo so early in mid-air, wow! So many cool moments today watching these world records. 
yet another city track, but this one comes with a surprise. Pink Yoshi! No, I'm just kidding, but it's Teddy Buggy, just like Singapore Speedway, and we've been seeing mostly Biddy Buggy or Mr. Scooty World Records with the snaking. So I'm excited for this one. This is an underrated city track. I like so many things about it. I don't like how you can drive on the left where the gates are and get stuck, but everything else about this level is phenomenal. I've never been to Paris and I really want to go and playing this track does make me excited about it. I've only seen the Eiffel Tower in Las Vegas and that doesn't count. All right, I mean, it's a pretty simple layout at the beginning. I'm mostly curious about the end of the level and I am, you know, I'm much more aware of the strategies on this level because I've watched this world record quite a few times, especially when Wave 1 came out. So I don't think it's changed too much since then. Lap 3, though, will be interesting. Oh, insane low trick. Yeah, so the snaking is not as prevalent here, but there's still a lot of really cool counter hopping strategies. Like, like, that is so clean, just releasing the purple and then the counter hops and squeezing out of blue and starting another drift. Like, that right there, like, and again! <laughs> oh, it's so good. You have to time everything so well. It's definitely a lot harder than it looks to master that strategy. Also, like, the speed they pull these strategies out. It's like the second they're landing from their hop, they're immediately getting their next hop. Motion gliding shenanigans. And that's what I mean, where those gates are, I've got stuck in multiple times on this track, multiple spots on those parts. And oh, see, they're even finding ways to get main turbos on the littlest of low tricks. Yes, we got more Teddy Buggy. I'm rooting for the Teddy Buggy World Records. Those are my favorites. They're the ones I can definitely learn the most from. And I mean, this is Toad Circuit, so we're never gonna see anything too crazy on this one. I'm mostly curious to see if the glider is used on lap two and three. Maybe we'll see some motion gliding, or we'll just see the boost panel bottom route snaking combo. And I doubt that the shortcut ramp that's used in Mario Kart 7 for the Shroomless Cut with the red monster tires, I don't think we'll be seeing that, but we are seeing the classic release your main turbo and jump at the end of your mushroom at the end of an off-road shortcut. A very long way to describe that, but I'm being specific, and we've seen it so many times. Oh, we are seeing the glider, interesting. I honestly didn't expect that. I mean, nobody uses the glider online. Whoa, no, never mind. Oh, oh, Shroomless Cut, let's go. I am not lying when I say this. I think the 150cc world records are more exciting to watch than the 200cc world records. There's just way more exciting, like, just just uh, driving mechanics in general that are utilized on every single run. I feel like I'm more surprised. With the 200cc ones, it's pure speed, it's all lines, and there's some crazy shortcuts. But look at that, I want to learn that now. Is that difficult? I mean, just drifting and skipping the entire off-road, releasing a main turbo off the trick ramp? Insane. Chaco Mountain. And I do not expect to see anything crazy on this one. Granted, when this track first came out, I remember seeing people like launching themselves over the mountain and doing the smallest shortcut ever and I doubt we'll see that here but it was quite entertaining. Oh okay using the edge of the off-road to main road to change your drift angle a little bit we're gonna see it here with the edge of the track and probably charge a drift a little bit quicker. Pretty standard main turbo spot. Okay I gotta remember that. Neutral jump, uh, drift, off the very tippy top of the ramp, fall to the bottom, release main turbo, double trick. I gotta remember that. That looks so much faster than what I do. I just go straight and I click the trick button multiple times. And I'm sure that's what most of you guys do. And uh, that's not how you do it. It's actually not that hard to do it, it looks like. It's gonna save a lot of time. That's the big takeaway I'm having from this one. Everything else seems pretty standard. We're gonna see the same mushroom spot all three laps, no question. Those coins are just way too wide, even though there's three of them there. All right. And it's an orange main turbo, and you gotta start your drift really early here, and you get a purple. You get the purple really early, and it's interesting how he like goes kind of sideways right there. All right. 
We never see anyone trick off of glider ramps in the world records, like, ever. I trick off glider ramps all the time, I feel like. It's just hard when, you know, sometimes you don't have enough speed, you gotta trick off of them. And for there, so much speed, you're just catapulting over the second one. Alright. Interesting. Didn't see him hop onto the stairs. I guess if you get, like, the right angle. Wow. Wow! That was just like squeaky clean sprint, hitting the wall to catapult forward. So complicated. But anyway, I'm so used to having to jump before the stairs to ensure I get the trick, but we're not seeing that here. In fact, wow, not even going for the booster, just tricking off the side, that's faster? I'm doing everything wrong. I'm playing this game totally wrong. I'm learning at least seven new things on every single one of these records, and at least one of them I can implement into my racing. Most of them I can't. Most of them are too complicated. Like these, these sliding and drifting strategies way too complicated, and I mean, you're going to be so susceptible to hitting things on the ground, or fire flowers, or boomerangs, or your opponent is going to be launching things at you. It, driving this crazy is pretty difficult online. Okay, well now they're going for the boost ramp. Now they're not even going for the ramp on the edge. Fascinating. This is a beautiful run. I'd say the thing that shocked me the most about this one, uh, I mean, you're not using the glider up top at the end and doing the glider shortcut. I know on 200cc they do that. I remember that from the world record, but here it's different. <laughs> Hitting that wall too, like what even is that? I do love how they're landing on top of the fountains and getting low tricks off the, the center. Like, look at that, that is so much better than what I do, but it looks tough. So I wanna try it and see how it goes. Orange main turbo and then drifting off of the planner following by uh, you know, main turbo trick as we love to see in all these records. And I love that one. Mushroom at the start, I think it's just being in awkward spaces on tracks like New York Minute and this one just means you got a mushroom at the start to get your momentum and your speed built up quickly. This right here is one of the most bland tracks in the game. So I'm curious to see if there's anything we can learn from this one. Yep, we expected that and going really wide because four points, just like that at nine, but only nine on lap one. Where is the 10th coin gonna be? And oh, using the side of the track to charge the me turbo. That's new, we don't really see that too much. All right, 11 points, beautiful. Who needs 10 when you can get 11? All right, yeah, now we're gonna see inside and are we gonna see some more wall grinding here? Blue? Blue? Oh, we're not. Okay, so I think the only reason why we saw that on lap one is just because a uh, purple main turbo was charged up during the four coin wide strategy. But lap two, you know, you're taking the turn entirely differently. All right, I mean, it's surprising how much, how much collision there is between the walls. An another one! There's so many walls hit on this run. There's like 10 walls hit. Yeah, it's the world record. All intentional wall hits. I'm guessing that Mr. Scooty might be a better vehicle for that as opposed to the Bitty Buggy. That's my guess. One of my favorite tracks. We're gonna see some neutral drifting on this one. Some professional neutral drifting, but we're not gonna see it done the entire time. Because sometimes these corners, you can't neutral drift it perfectly like you can on like Mario Circuit. You gotta still do a little bit of wiggle wiggle. And we're gonna see the classic motion glider, beautiful. Blue main turbos off of ramps. It looks so good. I wish it was easier to motion glide online. I don't know why Nintendo doesn't just make like the other analog stick a motion glider stick. Like why do we have to do this and then have to worry about every time we jump we like are slightly off with the the positioning and then all of a sudden we start drifting on a neutral jump. Like it is not good to play with motion controls on and be dealing with uh, all the different drifting mechanics. It's only good for motion gliding. And motion gliding looks really cool. So, I'm happy it exists. I just wish it was easier to do and it controlled in a simpler way. I mean, the biggest takeaway on this one is just the fact that the vent shortcut is not used. There's no way to do it streamless, clearly. And you do see it used on 200cc, but not 150. So it's pretty wild how different the strategies change. The shortcuts change, the lines change. The entire game is different on 200cc. It's vastly different. And it's kind of crazy seeing a right drift started so early in the grass. I'm guessing that's probably still the way to do it, even if you don't motion glide. 
Releasing that minion turbo super early. And just weaving through the cars, making Shroom Rage look like an easy track. Teddy Buggy! There we go. Missed the Teddy Buggy. And we're gonna see the Leaf Shortcut here. A little Mushroom Bounce. Gotta release that Mean Turbo right before the Leaf. And another Mushroom Bounce. Gonna get the coin. I've gotten better at this track. It's actually harder than it looks. I don't do the Leaf Shortcut. I almost never see people do that shortcut online. It's probably because it's tough. I don't think there's any other reason people don't go for it. But people always do the Shroomless Shortcut at the end, and that is not on the world record. Instead, we're just seeing the Mushroom used there, followed by a Purple Mean Turbo. I mean, this does look quite a bit faster. I just don't see people go for it, so I never go for it. If you do it wrong, I mean, you just bounce, you go super slow. They should not have called this track Sky Garden, though. It still upsets me. Sky Garden 2. That would have been the perfect name for it. Paratroopa Garden. If you're not going to put Paratroopa in the game, give Paratroopa his own track. They should just call it Paratroopa Garden. There's so many Paratroopas everywhere. And they act as like little out-of-bounds markers. It's so cute. I mean, there's not too much more to say on this one. Doing the same sort of strategy on Chocolate Mountain, like half the wheel in the off-road, half the wheels are in the mainland. It works out magically. Motion gliding. And la -ti da This track. Best music. Almost. Not quite Neo Bowser City levels, but the song just gets you hyped for the track. This is the best Wave 1 track, no question. Amazing track. And it was even great in Mario Kart Tour. I was excited for it when I saw it in that game. I was like, oh wow, Nintendo did a really good job with this one. So, we'll see if there's anything surprising. I don't think we will see the 200cc shortcut on 150. I'd be mind blown if it is possible. We'll see though. I've been surprised so many times in these runs. I haven't seen anything like ultra shocking, but I've seen a lot of things that I did not expect. Lots of tricks, but not drifting off the trick ramps, just just tricking, going straight. Probably because you have to boost the, the last trick ramp. And the mushroom into the Pro main turbo releasing right before the wall. That was really sketchy. Going between the bamboo. Between the bamboo, that's possible. That was ultra tight. Landing in a drift, somehow managing to squeeze up the main turbo in an impossible way that looks impossible. That I imagine if I tried it, I'd fall off, but they do it perfectly. Clipping the side of the rooftop? I don't even get it. I don't even get how they do this. How do they get the low trick there? I always shoot super high and then I fall off and then I'm upset. Wow, this is insane. I think we see the same thing as last time. Yes, we are. Release the purple main turbo into the wall and between the bamboo. What? What? That's so cool. I wonder like how much faster that is. All right, we're seeing the bottom route every single time. And main turbo and main turbo trick. And main turbo trick drift. Main turbo side of the rooftop, clip the side. What? What did I just watch? Cushion tires, Cat Cruiser, Rosalina. This makes no sense. This is a big surprise already. And we're going through all the original tracks now. I'm gonna do Mushroom through Special Cup now. And I could not believe my eyes. This Australian player named Byron has a 0.4 second lead over second place. And for a track that is so simplistic, that has been out since the game's you know, I mean, since Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, this is the oldest track in the game. This is the track that I thought would have the closest world records. And we are seeing one of the biggest gaps. A dominant performance. I mean, 0.4 over second place. I was expecting like 0 0.004. So, I mean, some things I found interesting so far in this run after watching lap one is just being able to hop and not lose any speed, maintain momentum and do streamless shortcut and another streamless shortcut wow this is an incredible world record the motion gliding too is ridiculous we knew the motion gliding was going to be a thing and i'm guessing this is the main reason that the cushion tires are being used this whole section at the end of the track is super fast with the cushion tires orange main turbo double counter hop orange main turbo didn't clip the wall this time like last time i don't know which is faster and then a hop the second they hit the off-road Fix alignment, another hop upon landing, and another momentum hop in the off-road. 
which I've seen in a handful of world records. It's very interesting. I cannot believe we have a world record 0.4 ahead of second place. Hats off to Byron on this one. This is probably my least favorite track, but who knows? It might not feel this that way after watching this record. Maybe I'll be surprised. And, oh, okay, I do this wrong. I hold a giant purple nature bow. They get an orange switch directions and get an orange nature bow off the ramp and not trick off of it. And the purple there, not too surprising, it looked like a wall hit, but it didn't matter. If anything, it helped. It seems to be a common trend. Lots of wall hits in these world records. And we are seeing pretty simple motion glider tactic, but that might have just been to get the coins. That was the 10th coin right there. So we'll see how lap two looks. We might see more motion gliding than lap one. But yeah, I do this section totally wrong, apparently. I do it way differently. I don't know if being on the teddy buggy changes things. I'm not entirely sure. And no wall hit there. This is gonna be the moment of truth. Okay, so a purple main turbo and then starting a blue main turbo, releasing a blue main turbo into the motion glider. Yeah, some snaking. It's different than I thought it would be. I thought we'd see them going way off to the side with like a purple main turbo and motion gliding super far into the finish line. Maybe we'll see that lap three, but this is actually a lot different than I remember. And maybe it's because I have the 200cc record in my head. I could be just thinking about that one, which is why it surprised me. Yes, this is what I was expecting to see. Okay, so we do see it on lap three, but not lap one and two. This is another track that really doesn't do too much for me. And I think it's a testament to how much Nintendo has improved the tracks. The Booster Course Pass tracks are significantly better than the base game tracks, in my opinion. And they're not all great. I mean, tracks like Toad Circuit and Tokyo Blur are underwhelming. But still, like... I do have more fun on them than I do on Water Park and Dolphin Shoals and Sweet Sweet Canyon and Twisted Mansion and some of these other snooze fest tracks. I did not expect the blue route to be faster. I'm not 100% sure that's the case for lap 2 and 3, but I always take the pink route, so maybe I'm playing this track entirely wrong. Let's see if there's anything different here. I'm guessing just a jump into the cannon? Yeah, just a jump, and this is a glider cannon. It's, it functions a little bit differently, and that's why you see just the regular jump instead of the motion glide. We don't see motion gliding and um, boosting, like main turbo boosting into the gliders on the cannons. We just see a jump, and it's got to be a jump when you already have main turbo boost going into it. So yeah, we see pink route on lap two. I guess lap one, you got to collect coins. It's better with the blue route. It's kind of cool how both routes are used. And I really like how on the shortcut you stick, so you're able to cut that like super tight. Reminds me of the Yoshi's Island cut. All right, yeah, cool. I mean, you're gonna see some neutral boosting here, like neutral drifting. <coughs> I'm alive, guys, I'm alive. Just had a sneeze attack, but we are back. And we're gonna see the same thing again. Awesome. Sweet, sweet Canyon, ladies and gentlemen. I think the Alberto will surprise me on this record. All right, already surprised. Did not expect the mushroom to be used that early over there. We're going to the anti-gravity route. Oh, I guess it's better than going wide for the coins. Oh, and getting a main turbo off of that. Oh, I never do that, that's cool. Already at nine coins, thanks to the anti-gravity path. So we're gonna see different routes each lap on this one and maybe some crazy motion glider stuff on lap three. The miniest of mini gap jumps. Followed by the shortcut, already had 10 coins, and that means the coins at the end do not matter. But the glider was not kept for the second part of the ramp, and the mushroom is used super early there because you're hitting the ramp, so you don't need to be mushrooming through the entire thing. All right, and we're, I'm expecting a drift off of this. Okay, so it's a left drift. I always do a right drift, so I'm doing that wrong. I feel like I do the opposite that the world record does so much while watching this. And orange main turbo. Wow, that is so fast. So much boosting happening, it's hard to follow. And the snaking, instead of keeping the glider. I'm curious what the lap three glider is gonna look like. I'm expecting to see a little bit more glider time, but it could just be snaking at the end. We'll see. 
pixeled it and middle route no the middle route is not even taken it's better to just go in the water i did not expect that i always take the middle route when i take the middle route i think i'm taking a shortcut now i'm realizing i'm taking a slower route fascinating but yeah that that's really crazy how they release the blooming turbo before the gap and then just do a regular trick and yeah okay not as surprising as i expected but wow no glider lap three on the shortcut what is happening here iggy koopa brand new dlc character never seen before in fact i can't even remember the last time i saw iggy koopa even used in a race online might be one of like the top five least used characters but not here on mario circuit we are not only seeing iggy koopa but we're seeing the leaf tires something we haven't seen as well as the ink striker the ink striker was bound to show up eventually and I was shocked to see every single 150cc DLC Cup world record and not see the Ink Striker even once, considering the Ink Striker is very popular online. That was one of the craziest motion glider strategies yet. I would never risk that. I mean, I don't do motion glider online, but still, still. Clipped the tree, barely made it back, and that's still a massive shortcut on lap three, cutting most of the off-road. So it turns out the ending shortcut with the off-road is not as good as the grass shortcut, which is surprising to me. I was definitely expecting to see the sand shortcut utilized, but I guess not. The Luigi Circuit style sand shortcut. No use, instead holding a massive purple main turbo drift. What a crazy record. And that this is the neutral drift corner of the game. At the very end, there's a little bit of wiggle, but it's a lot of neutral drifting until the very end. And here is the strategy normally. There's no piranha plants to ruin their day. Pretty insane. Pretty insane stuff. All right. Just just finding ways to squeeze out these meterbos. Constant meterbos. Almost almost never not drifting. And this is absurd. I cannot believe my eyes. More Yoshi. Back to the teddy buggy. And this just like further proves to me that the Teddy Buggy is superior to the Ink Striker. We've seen the Teddy Buggy used in at least 10 world records at this point, the Ink Striker only once. Granted, that could change. I don't know how these last 40, I've lost count. We got like 42 more tracks after this, I believe. So we got a ways to go, but still surprising. And I'm happy to see Teddy Buggy as always. I don't know what the proper strategies are for this track, but it's interesting to see this route being taken. Oh no, switching. Oh, trolley hopping. Cool, cool. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I wasn't even expecting world record to go to the right path. I thought the left path was faster and I thought the right path was only good because of the double item box. I never take that shortcut at the beginning because you missed the item set. But sometimes I'll take half the shortcut and then I'll go back to the main road and try to double up item boxes. Or, uh, I actually, are there item boxes there? I can't even remember. I think so. I think I just don't go for the shortcut because it's risky. I've fallen off into the water multiple times. But I just, I never really go for that. Something I'm realizing. Not too often, at least. So, okay, the trolley bouncing is a legit strategy. It seems kind of difficult to implement online unless you're very in tune with the... Uh, the different routes the trolley takes online. I'm, it might be slightly different than offline. And nothing crazy with the crates or the barrels. But of course, this shortcut being taken every single lap. The two wheel shortcut. Pixel perfect. And more snaking, more counter hopping. Probably a purple main turbo here. Yep. Not trying to do like an orange and a blue or anything crazy. I'm guessing off the ramp here at the end. Yeah, so I'm guessing they got a main turbo as they tricked there. It was kind of hard to tell. And the trolley would be in the way if he was going any faster. Major props to Alberto. We have another Birdo world record from Alberto. And some snaking. Some snaking. Double trick. More snaking. This is another track that is one of my best tracks online but I just don't feel like I do anything that special. I think that everyone just struggles on it for whatever reason. Maybe it's the ending, maybe it's the water portion. It can't be the beginning. The beginning is super simple. Whoops. 
Okay, that reminded me of Tokyo Blur, just grinding on the wall with the boost. I guess if you have like a ultra, you know, purple main turbo, or you have boost from a booster, like a boost panel, then you can use the walls to charge your main turbos easier. What was that? What was that? There's a lot going on in these records. Some I understand, and a lot of trends I'm seeing. I'm really picking up on the trends. And one reason I think I do well on this track online is this underwater section. I always get the purple into the orange there, and the world record does it as well. And most people do not do that. They get an orange, then they like get a blue, then they're just going extremely slow in the underwater for a while. But you gotta squeeze out those main turbos. Gotta go inside the gargoyle with the hammer, which I always call a scythe in the videos. And more snaking. I don't know how comfortable I feel snaking on this super slender section. But Alberto is showing everyone who is boss. This is a beautiful Twisted Mansion art. This is making me like Twisted Mansion a little bit more watching this. I mean, it's not a terrible track. It's alright. It's better than its reputation, but it's still not one of my favorites. And we're seeing the top route. Top route is always the way to go. Something we already knew, you never want to take bottom route, and nothing too crazy at the end, just going inside the gargoyle. We have Yerson, the Colombian player, I believe, and it's another Teddy Buggy world record. Teddy Buggy takeover is for real. There's almost as many Teddy Buggy world records as Biddy Buggy, it feels like. I mean, it's close. I'd say, like, Biddy Buggy and Mr. Scooty have more records, but the Teddy Buggy showed up more than I expected, and I love it. I love it. The Teddy Buggy looks cool, too. I, I think it's better looking than the Wild Wiggler, and it's a little bit wide, so the hitbox is a little easier to uh, you know get Mario Karted on than some of these other top-tier vehicles, but I think it's better than Mr. Scooty. I really do. Everyone uses it for a reason. I don't think we're going to see anything too crazy on this one. There is a beginning shortcut that he just passed, but... It doesn't seem to be really faster or useful in any way, even though I've seen it in like a million Mario Kart 8 Deluxe shortcut montages. It's not faster. World Record doesn't do it. As for the ending strategy, there's nothing too crazy when it comes to skipping platforms or, I mean, you know, he, he's just doing the cut shroomless and then using the mushroom at the end. It, it's pretty expected. And the top route, it, it works really nicely just having to get a blue main turbo while if you take the bottom route you need an orange main turbo and then you need to kind of like hop through the off-road. You, you have to grind the wall a bit beforehand so it's definitely better to take top route but I would say it's a little more difficult to get the MT uh, if you do the bottom route and make it work. Well actually no, I'd say the top route is harder because you have to get the jump. If you don't get the full off-road skip, then you're screwed over completely. So, I changed my mind. I think the bottom route is easier, but the top route is faster. And that's good balance, if that's true. I don't know which route's faster. For these world record holders, it's probably easier to take the top route because they practice it so much. Beautiful run. Underrated track. Great world record. Okay. Yoshi Teddy Buggy. Yet again. I mean, we might see more Teddy Buggies than anything by the end of this. Oh. Yeah, if you cut it so tight that your wheels fall off, it makes you even cut it tighter, because like your vehicle just wraps around so seamlessly. And so I'm seeing that trend. That, that's more of like a glider cannon with how fast you go. So that is why we saw the jump onto it. Oh, I was expecting an airplane wing trick. I did not see it. A little disappointed. That's my favorite thing in the entire game. Considering the first time I saw that, I was just like, Nintendo, major props. That is the best hidden trick spot in the game. There's some pretty cool ones in the booster course pass as well. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm just guessing when they drift before the, the boost trick ramps, I'm guessing it's just an alignment thing. I don't think it's faster. I think it's only faster because of what comes afterwards. I don't know, though. That was a little weird. Motion glider. Leveling out. And... Squeezed out the orange. Okay. This track, in my opinion, it's great the first half. I think it's really fun. The second half, 
I just don't see the point of having like back-to-back -back gliders, like super long gliders like that. It's just like kind of like, okay, I guess. We'll go way up high and then we'll go way down. It just, it just kind of feels, that part looks weird. It just looks weird how he's doing it. But like, I'm judging the track layout by Nintendo. I feel like they could have done a lot more with this. I don't think they needed to have us go up in the sky and then come down. They could have done something more creative than that. Beautiful run though. Ooh, okay. I was expecting something a little more courageous from the combination for this full underwater track with a glider ramp at the end, but it's just the same combo that we saw earlier on Squeaky Clean Sprint, but I guess that makes sense considering this is mostly underwater just like that one. And wow, we saw the right route taken. I never take that route. I forget you can even go that way. This is one of my worst tracks. This is one of my least favorite tracks, and I probably have a lot to learn on this one. I'm guessing the Streetle is just better underwater than like almost every vehicle. It's gotta be what it is. Oh, you could do the 200cc shortcut on 150. Wow, well, I mean, you gotta motion glide that, so I don't know how useful that would be for me. It's still really cool to see. And I'm loving the low trick off the ramps. Oh, both of them, that's cool. I gotta remember that, that's actually really helpful. I always feel like I go super slow in that section. 10 coins and still taking this route. I love to see it and I gotta practice that. It looks a little sketch. It looks like you can easily fall off, but wow. That is way more fun than going the middle route, and I feel like I fall off sometimes in the middle. So I'm feeling pretty good while watching this because I did learn quite a few new things here. This is insane. <laughs> insane. I actually like the track a little more after watching this. I did not realize you can even do that shortcut on 150. Wow. And this right here is clever, because the underwater physics are really floaty, so you can actually fix your alignment to get that last wooden ramp. I think they hop before they get the trick from the water geyser, from the pipe, I, I don't know. And then here, uh, six tricks. Gotta shake your controller, the R-Tat strat. And overall, it's a pretty surprising old record. I was expecting just to land from the glider and get like an orange me turbo and mushroom past the last little section of off-road. That's what I expected. I mean, after we saw the last world record, I guess I wouldn't be as surprised to see the crazy 200cc glider shortcut on 150. I don't think we're gonna see it, but who knows? What does this section look like? Okay, so they, they drift into the spin boost and then release the main turbo after the boost from it ends, okay. We definitely see less snaking on the anti-gravity, but we did see a little bit of it on Mario Kart Stadium. I feel like we didn't see much of it on Sky High Sunday. That's an entirely anti-gravity track. I don't think we really saw much of it there. And yeah, so there's no crazy motion glider shortcut, which is a little sad, but I guess it makes sense. You just can't get enough speed for it. It's absurd it even exists in the first place. I'm really glad 200cc exists in this game, like just making more crazy shortcuts possible and changing up the whole entire thing. I just wish that it was a little more obvious when you play online on where your opponent's back trail is. When you're playing 200cc, it just becomes so impossible to evade items, especially at the higher level. And motion glide into drift, and there's no trick there, which is interesting. We're so used to seeing like a main turbo off of trick ramps, but we're not seeing that at all. Just holding the drift and getting the purple main turbo after the mushroom. Getting these purple main turbos. Gotta remember this right here. The snaking is real, never mind. We're seeing the snaking. And it all started after the spin booster, so I guess it was really important to hit the spin booster into a main turbo after. I feel like spin boost, spin boosting has a weird mechanic to it. It's got some weird properties. Sometimes it feels like it slows you down during a portion of the spin boost. And the jump at the end. What are we gonna see on this one? A mushroom at the start. We're back to doing that, okay. We're probably gonna see a mushroom at the gap jump shortcut and just skip the trick ramp altogether. I'm expecting to see that. And then the last mushroom will probably just be on the shroomless shortcut that everyone takes in the middle of the track. Let's see what happens here. No, mushroom is kept, purple main turbo, and releasing a blue main turbo into a purple main turbo in midair. Oh, okay, I do that so wrong. I need to learn that. I always just hold it and get an orange, and then I hit a rock afterwards. That was better. Slightly better. 
sometimes like I'm seeing like these pops in weird places like on Maple Treeway at the beginning of each lap doing the shortcut. Like sometimes you get the hop at the top of a slope and you soar. And we saw it there, a little hop right before the like the dam section with the waterfalls and the falling boost panels. I don't even know I don't even know like <laughs> how they make this look so easy. I feel like I hit the tree every single time. <laughs> Gotta watch that tree section a few more times to pick up on things. It's a very impressive run. This track is one of the most voted tracks along with Mario Circuit 3, DK Summit, and Exact Bike Arena. And Yoshi Circuit is voted a lot. Mushroom Gorge is pretty popular, which makes me happy. But yeah, the, the, this one's insanely popular. Oh, not keeping the glider, instead main turbo -ing. I feel like in older world records, we saw the glider kept much longer because it was faster in the air, but now it's faster on the ground because of all the snaking and the main turbo buffs. Ah, okay, well, mushrooming at the start. I've seen it seven or eight times now. It's actually more common than I expected. First time I saw it, I was mind blown. What? How? That was the best super bounce I've ever seen in my life. That was insane. All right, so I mean, this is the second Ink Striker world record. It's nice to see another Ink Striker. The Ink Striker was more like the Extinct Striker, but not quite. <laughs> and we got some more wall grinding. Oh my gosh, they used the wall to bounce off it to hit the booster to keep their drift. So genius. These world records are so genius. The best part about the Ink Striker is just the boost you get. I mean, it's so satisfying, like the sound effect. That's the best part. I don't like using this much. What? 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 That doesn't make sense to me. Is it because they're hitting like the very front of it and it just has different properties in the middle and it makes you shoot lower because you're hitting like the very bottom of it? I don't know. Kind of reminds me of like Mushroom Gorge. Yeah, you know what it is? Is think about it. Mushroom Gorge, flat mushrooms. They took the Mario Kart 7 mushrooms. But then you take, you know, this track and it's got the, the rounded mushrooms. And if you think about Music Park, it doesn't have that. It's got the tambourines that are completely flat. So this track just has different mushroom pads. And even DK Jungle has flat ones. This one just has different ones. You can't really quite hit the edge there, but you can hit the edge here. And this is crazy. That is crazy. That's one of the most exciting things I've seen so far, just because it looks fake. It looks like a speed mod gets activated for two seconds, and then you go back to 150cc. I don't know. I don't know what I'm witnessing. Also, they prolong the glider there. They hold down after they're coming out of the glider cannon and it seems to work out quite nice. There's the wall grind strategy and there's the motion glide and what? The mushroom is used in mid air right there? I don't even understand this world record. This was one of the most surprising ones so far. That last world record was by Alberto. This one is by Army. They have the most world records in the game. Oh, you could do that shroomless so easily. Wow. Even on lap one with no coins. I feel like I only go for that on lap two and three when I have quite a few points. Very impressive. Another Peach Bowl record. Nice to see. It's not Yoshi all the way. We I think we've seen like two Birdo World records, two Peach Bowl records, and like one Daisy record. That's it. <laughs> what? Okay, I need to really process everything on this one. There's a lot to take in. Jump! Yeah. I knew that was coming. I, I, I'm starting to like actually predict what's gonna happen a lot of times, but I'm still surprised multiple times each record. Orange Metro Boat, blue, purple. This part's always scary when you have a purple Metro Boat, but they still cut it so inside. And yeah, the purple followed by an orange, I believe, right? Yeah, and then I think drifting into spin boosters is the way to go. I, I That looks really hard. I feel like you gotta really know how to finesse the motion glider to make that work. And then you can cut so much extra out of off-road as long as you jump at the very end of your mushroom boost and uh, combine it with a mini turbo. It's really fascinating. I'm definitely learning a lot watching this. I'm gonna implement some of these things into my game. I'm gonna forget 90%, but by the time I edit this video, then I'll be able to re-watch everything and, you know, at that point, I've seen everything twice and it'll be a little more downloaded, but it's easier said, easier watched than done. And especially with strategies like that, I'm never going for that one. But I will be doing this. I mean, oh, he got so much air before he even left. 
Wow, this is by Vincent, an American player. I feel like this is like the first American world record I've seen so far, at least one of the first. And I must say, the special cup in this game is really good. The mushroom, flower, and star cup kind of underwhelm me, especially compared to the last three or four Mario Kart games. I think it's like the weakest first three cups of any game in a long time, but the special cup is solid. And the DLC cups are great. The Mario Kart 8 DLC cups are amazing, like the Yoshi Egg Cup I really like. Oh. The motion gliding makes the record so cool. It would feel a little bit lackluster without it, because I always find the gliding in this game to be underwhelming, just with how the gliding was so broken in Mario Kart 7. I, that was one of my favorite parts about Mario Kart 7, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, like, I just feel like the gliding is slow. But with motion gliding, it's it's not the case. It's like some of the most exciting parts of the records. All right, are we gonna see a shortcut here? No shortcut, okay. Maybe that's only on 200cc. We'll see if it's utilized on lap three at all. And wow. It's crazy how on the first lap, it was the complete opposite. With the entire route plus the motion gliding angle. Complete opposite. More double counter hop into main turbo. And you want to always start your drift before the staircase, so that way you can charge part of the main turbo boost in the air before you land from the stairs on a really tight angle. And yeah, sometimes they release the main turbo late. Sometimes they release it after they're already in the air, like when they're tricking, as opposed to like right when they go off the trick ramp. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> so sketch. Hit that out of bounds there for a moment and came back to reality. A little hop over the dirt, and a mini turbo to seal things off. Yoshi, Baby Buggy, the most common combo. No question, it's definitely the winner. The best time trial combo. Until Wave 6 comes out, and Nintendo nerfs Yoshi, and the Bitty Buggy, and everyone's sad, and all the world records are pointless, because Nintendo says so. <laughs> It's cool though to see like the same people who had the world records before all the balance patches still able to dominate. They were able to adjust very quickly to the new stats. I've already seen the Rainbow Road world record multiple times, so I feel like I won't be surprised by this one, but I'm gonna focus and see what I can point out. I mean, it's a lot of it's on anti-gravity. And yeah, just Pixeling these corners, having two wheels off the edge makes such a difference with how tight you can take them. Insane motion glider, inside route, hop before the cannon because it's a glider cannon. We're starting to see the trends. We're starting to figure out what's going to happen before it actually happens. And a drift is held until the ground, immediately released upon hitting the ground. And some brake drifting here. You almost never, ever see brake drifting at all on 150cc, yet Nintendo made this last corner so tight, because I think what happened was Nintendo was like, all right, we made Rainbow Road, we're almost done making the track, but this is way easier than the last like seven Rainbow Roads, so uh, we gotta make it difficult. They're like, oh, let's make the last corner really sharp, because I mean, this Rainbow Road is shorter, it is simpler, it is easier than the Wii Rainbow Road in every single way, the Mario Kart 7 Rainbow Road, the Mario Kart DS Rainbow Road, the GameCube Rainbow Road, it's so much easier than all of them. But the last corner, pretty tough. And on 200cc, this track has much more of a learning curve. I do love this track though. Just because it's easier doesn't mean it's worse. I think it's better than a lot of the Rainbow Roads. We're going to see like 3,000 MTs by the end of this one. And another track with a mushroom at the start. It feels like tracks that have straight sections. That often happens. Ones where you can't immediately get into a drift unless it's a snaking drift. And wow. Okay, so... Uh, I guess that's just the best spot to use is at the beginning. We're gonna see the shortcut use lap two and three, but collect the coins lap one. So interesting how that's faster. Coins are super important in this game. Oh, ultra shortcut. <laughs> wow, that's actually so perfect. I love that. Cause that that's a bigger like rat shortcut than in Mario Kart Wii there. And I mean, this one feels a little smaller, but it's probably just because of the terrain. It's flat in Mario Kart Wii, and in this game, it's hilly, and you can easily mess up. And any craziness here? Two tricks, wow. Really manipulating the moles. <laughs> All right, 
Orange Mean Turbo into orange, probably. Into another orange? Nope, just blue Mean Turbo succession. Three of them. And hop realignment into the shortcut. Orange Mean Turbo chain trick! Glider completely pointless. Even though motion gliding exists, the glider is not utilized. That just shows how bad that glider is. And the mole shortcut is only for lap one because of the placements. Cool. Mushroom at the start. Not before the item box set. That was what I was expecting. Really now? Really? I thought the mushroom would be right here. Inside the tires. No glider ramp. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. I love the glider ramp shortcut. It used to be used in the world record. Wow, though. Inside the oil patch. And this is just the spot. And then you release the main turbo before the mushroom runs out. We've seen it a million times to cut even more off-road. And I've been starting to do this. I've messed it up sometimes, but it's very helpful. You can gain a lot of time on your competitors by not going all the way around the U-turn. And it's such a satisfying world record to watch despite the glider not being used. And I just love this track. It's one of my favorite tracks in the game. Still, even after all the DLC. The most surprising thing for me, besides the shroom spot though, is, is just the ending. Like, I already knew about this. I've been doing this for a little while. I don't get the main triple after though. I should probably start doing that. And then it's it's just the ending. like. Like right here, being able to still squeeze out that blue main turbo and make that work. Wow. Bitty buggy Yoshi. A story as old as time itself. Or actually, as old as Wave 4. So Cheap Cheap Beach, it's a trap. And uh, actually, don't mind this one. But it's not the most riveting track but the next one <laughs> is even less riveting <laughs> i am uh not a fan of the shell cup in this game but i love gba mario circuit so uh i mean the big takeaway here is that the wooden ramps are faster the wooden ramps have been utilized a lot today i'm surprised though i mean i don't think we've seen a single trick off a of glider today even once after making this video, I'm never going to trick off a glider again in my life. Unless I'm approaching it with low speed. Because then you need to if there's no booster before. That'll help get your speed up. So it's not completely useless. Some nice snaking on this one. Using every inch of the track, as per usual. And the mushroom is extremely early. And that slide, they didn't even jump to switch directions. How did he do that? Wow. Just grinding the wall into an orange, into a motion glider. I would have never expected that. Like, how do these people think of these strats? It's, it's so unorthodox from what you'd expect. And here, going up, I gotta remember that. Going up and then getting a main turbo onto the wooden ramp. And going inside the palm tree, even though you don't even need the coin. Already at 10. Mushroom! Okay, so I guess they do get a jump, but the train makes it easier to make it look like there's no jump at all. It looks like a slip drift. Inside drift is officially dead. Couldn't get the first coin, but three coins so far. I was 100% sure this was a sport bike track or a Yoshi bike. And here we are on Yoshi Bitty Buggy yet again. Seven coins, snaking up a storm. I think that ever since they buffed main turbos, it's just faster to main turbo than it is to stay in the air while gliding. It's faster than taking super sharp lines with the inside drift. It's just faster to always be snaking. But online, it's much harder to snake. And we have yet to see a single record with a baby character. I'm curious to see if we'll see it at all. I have not seen a single Dry Bones World Record the entire time. That's making me devastated. <laughs> but I do love Yoshi. Yoshi's one of my favorite characters, so I can't be too upset. Motion glider. No surfboard. Okay. I mean, I don't see the beach anywhere on Berlin Byways or Toad's Turnpike. Yeah, there's lots of surfboards. I don't know what that's about. I don't really know what to say on this track, guys. It's Toad's Turnpike. I always forget about this track. I forget it's in the game. You only play it once a month. Nobody votes this track. 
If, if there was a poll on what's the worst track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I think this track would win. Because even though it's not my least favorite track, it's probably bottom five. And it doesn't really have anyone that loves the track. While there's plenty of people that love Exide Bike Arena, and plenty of people who like Dolphin Trolls. And I don't think people hate Water Park as much as this one. All right, that's Toad's Turn Pike. Green Birdo by Army, and I love this track. I'm very excited for this one. And the snaking is gonna be even more ridiculous because of the slidey texture. We're gonna see a shortcut right here. Low trick. I've never seen that before. That was really good. And okay, so opting for the left draw. I always go to the right. I'm gonna remember this. I feel like 80% of people go to the right and that would leave me coins on the left. I did not expect left to be faster. Wow. What's the shortcut gonna look like here at the end? We know this is gonna be the fish room spot every single lap. Okay, so they release me turbo, jump, start drift while they mushroom, and then skip over the mound and are able to get back onto the track with the main turbo. It's a little bit different than I expected. This is really cool. I don't know if I wanna risk that online because you have to deal with the pokey afterwards. It seems a little bit risky. I love it though. Releasing main turbo in the air and then having a little bit of boost upon landing before the, uh, I don't even know what it is, the, the quicksand section, I guess. Double trick, nice. I mean, Hammer Bro is on these statues. Is Hammer Bro not gonna make it into the game? I feel like Hammer Bro has a decent chance. I give Hammer Bro a 25% chance to be in wave six. 25%. I'm predicting it's gonna be Diddy Kong and Pauline, but I'm hoping it's Funky Kong and Diddy Kong. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, releasing that meat turbo in the air there is so weird. Also, Birdo's bow just really blends in with the track well. The geysers, you never want to hit them in Mario Kart Wii, the custom track. The geysers are boost panels. They're super helpful. In this game, you avoid them at all costs. And low trick? Nope, just regular trick. Beautiful. I have mentioned this at least three or four times throughout the video, saying there has not been a single Baby World Record. Donut Planes saved the entire, the entire fan base. Everybody loves the baby characters. And in fact, Nintendo put in five baby characters because people said, Mario Kart Wii didn't have enough baby characters. We need another one. We need them to fill up the character slots. Make a baby character for every single character. Period. Nobody said that. I don't think people care about the baby characters. Except for me, because Dry Bones counts as a baby character. No, he doesn't. I'm just kidding. This is SNES Donut Plains. I'm just excited there's a baby character because the baby characters are only on 200cc and the main reason why I'm excited is not because it's a baby character, but because it's a You could do that streamless, nice. Uh, it's because there's no representation almost at all for anything but the middle weight. Like, it's all Yoshi. It's all Yoshi, and it's all Yoshi's counterparts. There's been a couple heavyweights, just a few, and there's been no lightweights at all. And we finally are seeing a lightweight. The lightweight class is not extinct on time trials. That shortcut's crazy. The fact you could do that streamless, I love it. Best world record. The records are becoming more predictable now, just because I have seen the world records on these tracks in the past. Unlike the DLC tracks, where a lot of them I never watched on 150cc, so I don't think I'll see anything too crazy here. But I do love the orange Yoshi with the blue teddy buggy. It looks great. So, just gonna enjoy that and enjoy the beautiful track. The hot air balloons. <laughs> it reminds me of Bone Dry Dunes right there. It's like, it looks like he's going to a totally different part of the track, and then he just goes the normal route. So, a couple Shroomless shortcuts. Shroomless shortcuts are a big thing in this game. There's not that many like gap jumps, like risky gap jumps, like we're used to seeing in Mario Kart Wii, but there are a lot of Shroomless off-road shortcuts because of the way the off-road physics work with the way you can preserve your speed. I love this shortcut. I don't really trick off it much. I usually drift off of it, so I'm doing it wrong. And the motion glider. Beautiful! And then this just works out so nicely, having the boost already, and wow! It looks like they should get slowed down by the off-road, but they don't. It really does! Like, it looks like their full vehicle is in the off-road there. I guess it's just like the speed boost from the 
Uh, I guess the Meat Turbo prior is still in effect. I don't know. That, that's really surprising. We're going to get to see it one more time. And it's a hop and then a trick. So the hop is probably to fix the alignment slightly going into the next corner after the trick. Motion glide. <laughs> this is an orange or a purple. It's just an orange. Followed by a blue, and then it's not even a hop out of the off-road, it's a drift out of the off-road. Is it that simple? Should I be doing that online? This is what we like to see. This is what we wanted the whole entire time. We wanted some more heavyweights, some more lightweights, some diversity. We have the sports coupe. Not the azure rollers, the regular red bodacious rollers. This is what you guys wanted. This is why you stayed so long in the video to see some mix-ups. We got to see Baby Daisy, now we get to see King Boo, the short cat character, because he thinks that King Boo is better than Yoshi, and you know what? He is right on DK Jungle. Oh, okay. Going to the left of the Tiki dudes. Pretty cool. I can't believe this is the world record combo. Why? I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it at all. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> I guess that, my, okay, so my theory is that the corners are easy enough to make and there's not enough room to do the snaking shenanigans. And there's lots of boost ramps, there's a glider, there's an underwater section. There's all these sections that make it so you can't just snake the entire thing and just break away, which is what we're used to seeing over and over and over and over and over on every single world record with Yoshi and Teddy Buggy. DK Jungle, it offers something a little bit different. The Mario Kart Wii Custom Track has a section where the um, mushroom tambourine pad thing is and you can jump over the wall and it's the coolest thing ever. And that's the only thing this track is lacking. Imagine if right here you can go to the left and climb the wall and then skip that entire turn. That, 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 that would be the biggest shortcut in the game, so maybe it wouldn't be good, but this part's cool. I love how you go on the off-road early and use the mushroom and jolt upwards and still hit the glider ramp. And then it's interesting here, this is just like Wario Stadium, which we're getting to next. Just drifting off of the boost panels and releasing your mini turbo in the air and not tricking it off. It's a lot to memorize, all these mechanics. It's hard to even understand why these things are faster. If Nintendo would just put a speedometer in the corner, it would make my life a lot easier to figure things out. Yo, we got the Pikmin Amiibo suits. I've never seen this one before. Also, this world record was like 0.3 ahead of second place, which is a lot for the old tracks. Almost as surprising as the Mario Kart Stadium record. Now, this track has a lot of tech. I mean, it's very confusing. I don't understand it all. But this part is where you can gain a lot of time online. People who know how to do that correctly floor the people who don't. You see massive breakaways on this track that you don't see on many other tracks. Also, this part's really interesting. Not a single trick off those ramps. Drifting off of them, releasing mean turbos. And a motion glider at the end. I'm good at the beginning of this track, but once we go off this ramp, that's where I'm lost. It looks like I'm doing it wrong though. It looks like you have to go off it wide and then get a trick. I always go off it tight and don't trick, so I'm gonna try to get better at that. Oh, flirting with disaster goes right in between the fireballs. I mean, these world records, they don't mess around. They really don't. No surprise. And then here, this is really important. Releasing the Mii Turbo mid-air. Starting a drift upon landing and drifting off both of the boosters, prolonging your drift into the shortcut using the mushroom. Purple Mii Turbo into Motion Glider. That's the track, ladies and gentlemen. I have watched this world record before, but it was a while ago and I was trying to learn what the heck was going on. And now I think I have a better idea of what's going on. And the mean turbo is released right there before, right before the ramp, and then you switch drifts. I thought he was gonna hit the fire. I was like, he got the old record and he hit the fire. Unbelievable. And he releases that mean turbo really early, just so he doesn't have too much of it into the finish line. Sure, but land. I don't know what I'm gonna see on this one. I'm kind of surprised though. I mean, I really thought we wouldn't see Yoshi Teddy Buggy again. I figured considering all the iciness that we'd see something a little bit different. But nope, Yoshi Teddy Buggy. I really like how they're going on top the elevated sections. They're leveling out at the top because there's a little slender part of flat road and then they're jumping off the tops. 
and oh the underwater section is faster you can get an orange mean triple there i never go this way it scares me i feel like i get lost and i hit things and then you go really slow underwater when you hit things i never go that way maybe i should start going that way let's see how lap two and three looks does it look any different or is it just going to be the same but here they're leveling out up top they're cutting it so perfect and they're jumping off the top. Oh, they didn't jump there. They actually released their main turbo and got a slip drift. Okay. I don't know if it's called slip drift in this game, but in Mario Kart Wii, <laughs> hit the wall again. Okay. It's called a slip drift whenever you're able to start a drift and you don't have to jump because like you're in the air already. So it's really useful on certain sections where the train barely changes. You get a little bit of air and you can start your drift and get your main turbo way faster. So I'm just gonna call it a slip drift. Slide, main turbo, slide. We Yoshi. Oh, you start the drift on top like that? See, there's the hop. Lap two, we didn't see the hop. Lap one, we saw the hop. Lap three, we saw the hop. Here you go around. That's not really that big of a shortcut, but this snowman shortcut is bonkers. And I say bonkers because he bonks every single time. Orange main turbo, level out. Blue main turbo, blue main turbo trick. Blue main turbo. <laughs> what? I was convinced. 100% sure we already saw the only lightweight world record and then here we go baby daisy again baby daisy is the fan favorite baby peach baby rosalina take a seat it's all baby daisy action today the second world record what the heck okay i'm starting to understand why this is a lightweight track the way you can manipulate all of that is super unexpected you can hit the very like the very very corner of the keys there <laughs> this is just unbelievable this is so cool i was not expecting music park to be such an exciting world record we gotta really dial in now figure out what's going on i don't understand any of it so far shroomless lots of shroomless shortcuts today yeah, hitting these xylophone keys is busted. And then that is the super bounce of a lifetime. Not quite the Cloud Top Cruise super bounce, but pretty glorious nonetheless. And... Trick. That's a delayed trick. I'm loving the delayed trick. Wait, how? What the heck? I gotta watch that again. That looked kind of weird to me. And they're using the piano keys... Uh, being on the very edge to manipulate their drift angle to get their main turbos quicker. You get really, really sharp drifts doing that. The sharper the drift, the quicker you get the main turbo. Wow. I feel like they get way more of a super bounce than I do. And these delayed tricks are really working out. Let's watch this again. Oh! Yeah. That's incredible. It looks like they even have a little bit of their boost going into lap four. Alberto gave us a show on Music Park and also on Sherbet Land. And this is Alberto for the third time in a row. You can get multiple tricks off of that. What? For all I know, he's gonna do the gap jump right here from Mario Kart 64. He's going for, no, he didn't. I, I was excited. I mean, nothing would surprise me at this point. I wanna see something that blows my mind more than anything today, but I don't think that's gonna happen. We still have quite a few tracks left. Oh, you know what? There is something coming up I know about that's really cool, but I'm not gonna say anything. You gotta watch till the end of the video. And in fact, if you made it this far, thank you so much because this is like the, I think this is the longest video I've ever uploaded. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but just based on the raw footage, it is absurd. So the fact you guys made it this far, major shouts to all of you and just let me know what other long videos you'd like me to make because I love making the long videos for you guys. It's my bread and butter at this point. <laughs> all right, so there's grass on the edge there. So you can't cut it too tight, unlike these other tracks. Yeah, so you can't be riding the very edge like Music Park. You gotta have a little bit of the vehicle still on the track. And mushroom early. Main turbo, double counter hop, slide, double counter hop, slide, main turbo, main turbo. <laughs> Ride the edge, and we are not getting to see that exciting trick strat we saw in lap one, because lap two and three, it's just faster to go this way. You don't have to worry about, you know, coins anymore, so that's why. I think there's a bit of brake drifting that happens there. It sounded like it, I could be wrong. 
the major break drifting moment we saw was definitely Rainbow Road. Wow, man, just not to end up in the grass there. And a mini turbo. Mushroom at the very start. I mean, I haven't seen that in a while. Taking the middle, getting two tricks. Okay, okay, I never take the middle. Maybe I should. These, these world records, they know how to preserve their speed. That's something that if you are new to the game or you're not as experienced, you might not know this, but like these world record holders are masters at preserving their speed. And that is a big part of this game that a lot of people don't even know about is how you can preserve your speed in the game and how you know you have to know how to slide and change main turbos correctly in a way where you can keep it going and keep that faster speed. A lot of people are turning when they're not even drifting and they're jumping and they're turning at the same time instead of jumping and then drifting after. They're doing all these things that are actually making you lose time and you don't even realize you're losing time. Like if you ever race the world record, you're losing by five or 10 seconds, which is an absurd amount. You know, it's like, it's like two blue shots for a lot of the people that just time trial the game casually or just trying to beat the staff ghosts and stuff. It's like, it's like the world record holders, they are gaining time on you every single millisecond because they are preserving their speed and they're always going faster than you. Like it's ridiculous these strategies they're doing here. This is actually like one of the most crazy ones yet, yeah, the amount of tricks I'm seeing. All right, let me try to actually focus on the run now. I've been like passively watching it, but this one just kind of overwhelms me if I'm being honest. Gotta really break it down. Got the main turbo there. I main turboing into trick ramps is huge in this game. And then here, get the low trick, beautiful. And then trick off the very edge. It's the lowest low trick you can get. And then the Kuzan slide at the end. I was kind of expecting a mushroom, but no mushroom. Back to Yoshi, Bitty Buggy. I believe this world record was quite a bit ahead of second place, like 0.2 or 0.3 or something. And this is like the hardest track in the game. Definitely in the conversation for it. Very tough track. What are we gonna see on this one? Ooh, nice corner cutting. Love to see it starting the drifts really early. Something I gotta take note of, starting these drifts early. How is this section played? Oh, okay, just take the inside. Oh, ho, ho. yeah, more wall grinding to get out those orange meter rows. And nothing too fancy at the end with the mushroom. It's not like Mario Kart 7 with the crazy glider at the end. A little simpler in this game. That's cool though, I really like how they use uh, the sloping there to start the drift and get the right angle and then ultimately go off the trick ramp where the prana is. Very clever. And the pipe, they're holding left while they're drifting right so they don't shoot off the edge when they're going over the pipe. It's a little sketchy going over those miniature pipe trick ramps. And... Yeah, it's like, it's like a down diagonal right, I'd imagine, in the air with the motion glider. Speed preservation, next level, and then right here, get that little bit of air, and then you charge your main turbo in the air, because you can actually do that in this game. In Mario Kart Wii, it doesn't work that way, but in this game, it's like, if you want, if you're getting air, and you want air, you, you charge, like right there, you, you charge your main turbo in the air, and then as long as you have a drift started before you go airborne, you're, you're good. So, just the manipulation in this game that these racers take advantage of. A lot to learn, a lot of cool strategies. And th this should be pretty standard here at the end. Yep, crazy record, really hard track. I have a feeling we are about to see something crazy on this one. The reason why is because this is 0.5 ahead of second place. I don't know how. This is one of the oldest tracks, you know, it's in the Wii U version, not even DLC. How is it 0.5 ahead of second? I don't know. Let's find out. Purple main turbo, purple main turbo. Orange main turbo. Motion glider. Shortcut right here, right? Yeah. And then a hop right before the off-road ends, right before the mushroom ends. Oh, you can drift off of that. It reminds me of Royal Raceway, just drifting out of the off-road. I don't get it though. It's like, it's like how? Like, why does that work? <laughs> like, no speed is lost at all. I'm starting to think it's just this player is just beast at this track and nobody else has figured it out. This is Panda, by the way. And Panda has a lot of the DLC world records. 
I'm not seeing anything so far though that screams 0.5 ahead of second. So maybe it's on lap three. And maybe it's this. Maybe it's just doing that right there three times. Saves over 0.1 a lap and nobody else has pulled it off. Maybe it's harder than it looks. Maybe it's a subframe thing and it's not something you go for online. I don't know. I have no idea. But I saw how far ahead he was and I couldn't believe it. I always trick off that and then trick off the glider, but you can get an orange main turbo. And it's still faster even if you don't motion glide. It's just more risky. Alright, alright, so what do we do here? Oh, shroomless. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe doing that shroomless at the end to perfection is the reason why Panda is 0.5 ahead of second. Yoshi, Teddy Buggy, snaking. A story that we keep seeing half the time. I'd say it's, it's like half the world records. We haven't seen Mr. Scooty. Mr. Scooty is the only bike that we've seen in a world record. We haven't seen it in a while. And I remember that this used to be a Mach 8 world record because of how you could just have <laughs> three out of four tires not on the track with that combo, with the hitbox being so large. But with uh, Yoshi Teddy Buggy, I'm honestly surprised. I mean, it's still a pretty compact vehicle hitbox, and it still is the go-to option here. It's definitely got more, you know, more security on the racetrack than Mr. Scooty. Oh, triple trick. Nice, nice. But yeah, kind of surprised to see it. It's definitely not the fastest vehicle, but I mean, hey, you can snake. The end. And we're seeing the, main, uh, the mushrooms used on the drifting sections. Yeah, just, just on the long drifting corners. That's it. It makes sense. I mean, there's really no shortcuts elsewhere. Wow, that was incredible. Very simple track, simple world record, fast world record, incredible world record. Ah yes, Yoshi Circuit. I'm excited for this one. I have watched this world record multiple times, but not the current world record. Miniature shortcut followed by the mushroom upon landing and enough to clear the waterfall shortcut. Beautiful start. Gotta go wide for the coins. And I'm guessing just a neutral hop here. No, totally different. Totally different than how I do it. Wow, okay, and then between the tires, but not even jumping. Interesting. That's actually quite a bit different than I expected. The strats have really improved over the last year or two. I think what's happened is just like so many more people are playing the game with the booster course pass that that just breeds so much more competition and the strats have been perfected. Lots of wiggling here. And th this is surprising, because I just neutral, like, jump over this. That's more similar to what I do. But that that's really good, because they're able to land with a better angle to start to drift and get their next main turbo quicker. It's all about the setup in this game. It's all about the setup to the next corner. I think that was a purple main turbo. It's awesome too, because like as they do the first part of that shortcut, they're landing in the grass, and then they're using the mushroom, and they're starting in the grass, going to the main road, and then passing the grass, and then tricking, and then the mushroom runs out. And here, yeah, it's like you start a right jump in the air, so you land diagonal, and you could start getting your main turbo right away. I gotta practice that, that's really cool. And then a little off for a shortcut there, orange main turbo, the end. Everybody's favorite track. Except for me. Except by Karina. Ladies and gentlemen. I do love how they managed to get the low tricks off the top of the ramps. That's super clever. And I still can't get over how there's over 200 different layouts to the ramps. I thought there were four. And I was very wrong. I wonder how often the time trial layout shows up. It's really hard for me to even remember all the different layouts. A lot of them are very similar. All right, let's see if I can figure out anything that will help me online for this track. Did they just miss a intro boat? That's what it looked like. Maybe it was intentional. I mean, see like, you're just constantly drifting everywhere. If you're not drifting, you're tricking. It's just easier said than done. I guess the 
first shortcut is better than the second one. Nice low trick. Oh, clean. Nice. Shortcut. No trick. I'm a little confused on this one, guys. I'm not going to lie. I saw a Miss Mean Turbo and a Miss Trick, I think. But then again, I don't know. Maybe it was on purpose. I, 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 I'm just not an expert at time trials in this game at all. Cool. That's exact bike. Woo! I had to give the loudest scream I possibly could because Dry Bones showed up at the end. Thank you to Alberto. Alberto, the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe God over here using the best character in the game. Everybody's favorite character. Prominent role in the Mario movie. Doing shroomless gap jump shortcuts. You know what? Dry Bones could not have shown up on a better track than Dragon's Driftway. I mean, I love Yoshi Circuit. That would have been cool too. However, it makes sense that Yoshi would have the world record on Yoshi Circuit. But Dry Bones on Dragon Driftway, one of my favorite tracks. A track that has a Mario Kart Wii-esque shortcut. Brings tears to my eyes. It's a beautiful thing. And this is the best world record by far. This is better than every other world record combined for one reason, Dry Bones. And look at that. It looks like he jumps after he's already airborne. It's really confusing, like visually. I can't believe my eyes. All right, triple trick, action, beautiful. Why is Dry Bones used here? I think it's the same reason we saw for Donut Plains. I think it's just a super narrow, tight track with really sharp corners where you need to have these lightweight combos and the Bitty Buggy is great with the main turbo. You can preserve your speed still. Yeah, you are already airborne and he jumps. How is How does he do that? That is confusing me. I swear, all four wheels are off the track. There's a mid-air jump. Some wizardry ha happening on Dragon Tripway. And squeezing out a main turbo there. This is just a crazy run. This is crazy. I can't even process this one. Jeez. Okay. Okay. Ink Striker. I think this might be the third time with the Ink Striker. I don't understand what the hell that hopping was about. But Luigi Ink Striker is the combo. If the Ink Striker shows up, it's also Luigi and the Leaf Tires. It's like the Leaf Tires go with the Ink Striker. And it might be an anti-gravity thing. It's gotta be, right? I mean, I don't know. It's surprising though. It must be a good anti-gravity vehicle. Shroomless shortcut. That is tough to do. That is like the hardest shortcut in the game. I'm serious. That Shroomless shortcut. I never go for that online. I almost always fail it. When I pull it off, I rejoice, and I am done for the day with Mario Kart, because I have peaked hardest shortcut in the game. And I'm a little bit kidding, but I seriously think it's very precise. And if you can pull that off in races, you have such a huge advantage. It goes uh, the same with a lot of other streamless shortcuts, but the DLC tracks, along with the Wii U DLC, you know, like this track, they have a lot of cool streamless shortcuts. I don't do that. I don't hold back there and skip that off-road patch. Maybe I should start doing that because then you get your uh, trick boost into the next trick ramp. So that's definitely faster. Wow, what a run. Unbelievable. And the main turbos are released right after the spin boost happens. Like right as the spin boost is ending, that is when the main turbo is released. That look, that is so tough. You got a double left counter hop after that. Wow, they make it look so easy. Incredible. Such a good run. And they hop before the ramp at the end, and then they trick. I cannot believe how much Mario Kart I've watched. Like seriously. I've never, ever watched this much Mario Kart in a day. When I did all 72 records, that was 200cc, and 200cc goes so much faster. 150 cc I'm like getting close to four hours on the raw footage here Because like you have to download all the ghosts and then y you can only download so many and then you have to delete them all and then download more And just gotta keep doing that over and over Oh Snaking on the dip, okay impressive I wonder if this is the same Vincent that dominates this track in Mario Kart Wii. American player. I mean, Vincent, American player, Royals Goldmine, 
Story checks out. <laughs> Pixeled it. More snaking. Jeez. Jeez. Yeah, I never use that right section there. I feel like I always go really far to the left when I land, and I need to start going to the right like he does. I don't want to do that. I, I feel like that's too hard. That's too risky. It does look fun, though. It seems like more like a bitty buggy thing, though. And then also, like, getting a major over there, like, I'm not doing that. You're just going to get bumped off online. <laughs> or you're going to hit someone's back trail or something. That does look fun to snake on, though. This part, way too risky for online. But here, he lands a lot more in the center and then starts an immediate left drift and sways to the right. And I like that a lot. I'm gonna start implementing that into the run, or into my worldwide races. Perfect ending. Another daisy record after all this time. And it's on the pipe frame. The last time we saw the pipe frame was with like Tanuki Mario. So it's cool to see it once again. This is a very good vehicle frame. I'm surprised we don't see it more, honestly. I mean, it does see some play online. I see it a decent amount. We did see more Streetle, I feel like, than Pipe Frame, but just a little bit of both. And only a little bit of Ink Striker. A lot of Teddy Buggy and an absurd amount of Bitty Buggy. I would say the most popular vehicle frames were Bitty Buggy, Mr. Scooty, then Teddy Buggy, but Mr. Scooty and Teddy Buggy were close. And we never, ever saw another bike used except for Mr. Scooty. Carts completely dominate this game. There's no question. The inside drift bikes have zero world records out of 88 on 150cc. And I'm guessing they probably have like two or three on 200cc from my knowledge. They, I know they have Toadstrom Pike on 200cc. So uh, this record was one of the closest ones. When I looked at the leaderboard, it was like everyone was within milliseconds. And it makes total sense. It's a very simplistic track. And this ramp strategy is really interesting though. Just boosting like mean turboing off the ramps and not tricking it, just getting that purple and then launching it over the shortcut. And then this ramp in the middle is pointless. Instead you just want to get the tricks, get the low tricks, use the mushroom at the end, get the orange mean turbo. And mean turbo! Mushrooming at the start. We're back to that. Alright, some things never change. And staying on the green route. How often will we see route changes? We're gonna see the Shroomless shortcut here, I'd imagine. Yep. And it's kind of busted because you get an item box online. And you combine it with this. Get the tricks, maintain your speed. Oh, going to the yellow route and staying on the yellow route. Are we gonna go? Oh, going back to the green route. Okay, I don't do that. I just go to the left and get the double box. Maybe I'm missing out. And this shortcut, really nice. I'm better at doing the shortcut when I'm just driving normally. It's hard when you have a lot of speed, especially because it changes your uh, your drift angle because this is slightly off-road the entire thing, so you gotta be really careful. Mushrooming early there, wow, okay. And because you're landing on the trick ramps, you're able to get the boost off of them really fast. And this is very similar to what we've seen already on Royal Raceway and Bone Dry Dunes. Visiting another portion of the track and then faking me out and then just going to the normal route. There's no glitches in this game. Like, I mean, motion gliding kind of feels glitchy a little bit, but there's no like shortcuts that are completely, completely like mind blowing, like save 10 plus seconds. There's nothing like that in this game. The biggest shortcut save like four seconds or something, three or four seconds. That's probably going to be the Snowland shortcut, the biggest one. These shortcuts here probably save under a second, like this last one. It's not like necessary to do this, but a nice little time save. This is gonna be a fun one. I mean, I think this is a top 10 track in the game. It might be top five. This is such a good track. Like, it's, it's just like, if you're a Zelda fan, you're gonna appreciate it even more. Like, I've only beaten like maybe four or five Zelda games in my entire life, so I'm not like the biggest Zelda fan, but like, you, know, you got the Master Sword, you go through the castle, you ride through Hyrule, and you do the Shroomless Shortcut to perfection. The Rupees as coins, 
the big Legend of Zelda sign at the start, the flags up top, the tents, the whole entire vibe is immaculate. So, just glorious track, and let me focus on the run now. I mean, I've seen this one, because I love this track, so I've, I've actually watched the world record on this one, so I'm not going to be too surprised by anything, but I do love seeing the Tidy Buggy, and I do think this is one of my best tracks overall, because I've actually like watched the record and digested everything with it. The Shroomless Shortcut, you want a neutral hop, you want to jump early. Like, if you're jumping late when uh, you reach the top there of the elevation where the grass starts, it's already too late. You want to have all your wheels on the concrete and then right before you get to the grass, that's when you jump and you neutral jump and you could skip the entirety of the off-road. You jump out of the off-road and then you start drifting and it saves so much time. But, you know, you do miss an item set, so sometimes you do want to go around. And if you're small, you can't do the shortcut. But yeah, not faster to go for the spin boosters, way slower. It is faster to go down the middle though if someone already activated it for you. And that's one of the coolest parts about the track. It's just the fact that people can activate the shortcut for you even if you don't take the wide route. Who's on slide? All right, that's it. All right, baby park, brain dead park. Coins, seven already on lap one. Are we gonna even see 10 coins on this run? Yes, we are. That's 10. And Shroomless shortcuts are going to only be occasionally. No, no, we're going to see them pretty often. Okay, yeah, we're going to see it every time. But it's it's purple meat heroes. That's only an orange. So sometimes it's... Okay, so the second one is a purple because you can do that little wall ride strategy that I never really knew about. I never knew you could grind the walls and get better meat turbo stages like that. I never do that when I play. So there, there's a lot of world records that do that and manipulate the main turbo stage by just grinding the wall and charging the main turbo faster. And that time was just a mushroom instead. And then here they're not doing the purple main turbo strategy, they're just doing an orange and then hopping out of it and that way they can have the perfectly straight alignment for the end. Do we even need to watch this one? Think about it. Online. Oh, shroomless, nice. Online, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you drive this track. You just camp at the boxes for 30 seconds and use the bullet and skip half the level. <laughs> I don't time trials, so <laughs> do we need to watch this? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're gonna watch it, we're gonna watch it. I mean, the, the shortcut at the beginning was surprising and I, I'm commending the yellow Yoshi usage here because it really just matches the track so well. I mean, I can't even see Yoshi. Where's the bitty buggy? I can't find anything. All I see is just yellow mess everywhere. Shortcut here? That's the mushroom spot? Wow. And this is funny. Like, the, the, the fact that even works, I mean, did they get a double trick right there too? Did they get a trick off the beginning of the mound and the end? I have so many questions on this one. I just cannot believe the speed preservation on the Shrimless Shortcut. One of the best I've seen in the entire 88 world records we're watching here. Not tricking off that one, going for Meeturbos instead. Okay. It's just so weird for me seeing this being the shroom spot. Like, what? <laughs> That's just so funny. I mean, we're gonna see a different shroom spot, obviously, on lap three. We're gonna, we're gonna see the, the glider into the wall. Like, but I was, I was expecting it to be the shortcut glider ramp over the gap coming up here on the right. I thought that would be where the mushroom was used. But nope. Instead, so you just go around. It's a big off-road path. There's just shortcuts everywhere on this track. I mean, it's insane. I almost just knocked over my mic right there. A trick! There's an actual trick off the glider. Never been done before. Yoshi Bitty Buggy. Cool. And we're going to the left for the coins. All right, well, you know what? Maybe I should go to the left more. I forget there's even a left path. I don't even remember the last time I went left in one of my videos. Inside the barrel, beautiful. Motion glide, and we're gonna see a rail shortcut here. I love doing this. Riding the rail, cutting it inside, so satisfying. And then the, these ramps with this water current, so, so nice. You just fly through this section of the track. Oh, how are they going so fast during that section? How are they going so fast on the boosters? What are they doing? Making this track look like it's a 200cc run here. Jeez. Okay, they got the meteor bow mid-air there. It's really hard to follow everything. Hit the wall. Okay. 
Orange Mane Turbo. Oh, cutting it inside, ignoring the water current. Trick. Delayed trick. And they just get so much air there. They're literally in the grass by the time they use the mushroom. I feel like I'm doing that shortcut totally wrong. They're doing it different. They're they're catapulting through it. Getting the trick in midair, or sorry, the mushroom, uh, main turbo in midair. It's been a lot of records, guys. I am going to be dreaming of Mario Kart tonight, considering I've watched four hours of Mario Kart today. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> I cannot believe I've done this. All right. And delay trick. Okay, so, so they just go off to the far left, and they trick early. Got it. The surprises are not over, guys. We still got a surprise at the end, so stay tuned. A lot to see. I'm very excited for the end of this video. I have some renewed energy, seeing that I'm only five records away from the end here. The marathon is almost complete, and we learned a lot in this session. We've seen a lot of consistency. There's been a few moments where I've been perplexed, but overall I've been able to understand things a little better. And my biggest takeaway is just how complicated the drifting mechanics are and the, uh, you know, all of the airborne mechanics, as well as the anti-gravity. The underwater I need a lot of help on. The gliding is all pretty simple. It's all motion gliding and we can't really take too much away from that, but we do know that it is faster to release your main turbo off of gliders, even without motion gliding, it's still faster. So I've already known that for a long time. But here it's like, that, that's so interesting. Releasing the main turbo and then starting the drift and then getting the air and then holding hard right and getting the super main turbo and just the way that these world record holders find ways to squeeze out the main turbos is so smart. And a lot of times it's like they, hit the ground, they charge a drift, they go airborne, then they charge it super and ultra main turbo, just like that, boom. That's really cool, getting that low trick. This is my favorite version of the track. I wish it was this version every single time. I like how they have the ramps there. On other versions, they don't have the ramps. And got a mushroom early. A lot of times you got a mushroom early for these off-road shortcuts. I was positive we would see dry bones or a baby character on this one, but I guess that's only for 200 to see. And it's just surprising because the triple U-turn section is very difficult and I just didn't really expect to see Yoshi. Thought we'd see something a little different from you know, Bowser City. This is one of my best tracks in the game. And uh, collecting those four coins is not easy though. Oh, almost fell off. And here's the shrimp spot. A nice little off-road shortcut there before the shrimp spot. And you do not even want to mess with the air vent. You just want to go down and start snaking. And then a little off-road skip there. No need to do this little off-road shortcut. It's so minuscule in this game. Got the purple. Snaking this section a little bit. And releasing the main turbo extremely early. You have to start your drifts really early on the section. That is imperative. If you're starting your drift late, you're done. Because it's super slidey. It's even more slidey than any track you've ever seen. It puts New York Minute to shame with its slidiness. It might be the same texture, I don't know. But <laughs> anyway, you, you just have to start your drift so, so early because of how tight the corner is. And I mean, it's pretty unforgiving near the edge. If you even have two wheels off, you're done. All right. No surprises here. I've seen this run before. And it's, uh, you know, it's one of my favorite tracks. The music's the best. And I'm really happy how many people pick this track online. People love this track. So I'm not alone on it. And here, I don't do this though. Like he goes over, he releases the main turbo to get some speed and starts a drift and skips a little bit of the off-road then leads that into the mushroom and that's really clutch. So this world record has gone down a lot in the last year and it has some crazy strats. I've never watched this world record but I have been told about it before. I know it's an iconic one and I know that people are really impressed with how the uh, the tricking section is done on the wavy road for the second half. <laughs> it's very fitting that you fly over the teddy buggy on the teddy buggy. And I love that we have a Kemic teddy buggy. Kemic, I believe same stats as Luigi, so we've seen this uh, same character before, just not Kemic specifically. And it's funny, like we didn't see a single PD Prana or Wiggler world record the entire time. And this is the sole Kemic world record. So pretty, pretty nutty. 
starting a drift, instead of tricking off the ramp, starting a drift, getting the main turbo and launching off the boost ramp. Look at that. Like, how are they getting a trick there? Like, what even was that? Before the shortcut, they get the trick in the weirdest spot, even though you can trick their period. This is a great track, by the way. Like, it's a hard one. I'm not the best at this one. I would say it's like mid tier for me and uh, my level of skill on it. But in overall enjoyment, I'd put it like A or B tier. It's, it's really good. Yeah, see, that is common. Just, just starting a drift before you go airborne. It's so common. So many tricks. What's this look like? <laughs> it's insanity. I don't, I don't understand that. Like, it feels like he doesn't even have a boost and he doesn't even trick and he just glides and then flies to safety. Super Bell Subway. <sighs> this track is the Moonview Highway of this game. And I say that because it is claustrophobic, it is terrifying. I almost cannot believe Nintendo made this track. There are parts of the level, especially on like lap 3, where the subways take up so much of the track that you have like a sliver you can actually drive on. Nintendo is so like casual now with the games and they make things so much easier. If you think about the retro tracks they've added to the games, they're so much easier than the original games that they came from. And then you have tracks like this, which are really tough. And you're like, wow, Nintendo is not making things easy. All right. I mean, I didn't see anything that surprised me so far, but the laps are different. So the best shrimp spot is not the ending. It's right here and the hop out of the off-road. We love to see it. Taking the top route here and just tricking. Nothing too complicated. The record is actually pretty simplistic compared to a lot of the other ones. And this is great. You know, I mean, I love doing that on Thwomp Ruins and Sky Garden at the end. Just being able to release your main turbo right, your, your orange main turbo right as you hit the off-road and then start hopping. It's a great way to preserve your speed and do off-road shortcuts in this game. It's a really cool mechanic. One of my favorite in this game period. Now, the shortcut here is just gonna be the same, and that's the low trick ramp in the middle, as opposed to the ones on the sides. And here you just go straight. There's no drifting shenanigans going on. And then, hop, 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 hop. Drift, drift, ta-da! We have one more surprise in store for you guys. Thank you for making it to the end, and please do me a solid, help the channel out, and leave a like. It does wonders, and one second, boom, like, or bam, like, <laughs> the shortcut's coming up. I am really just thinking about this one, honestly, for like the last 20 world records, because I remembered that this is a big surprise. I heard about this when it happened, and first of all, I mean, we have Wario, we have the Mach 8, so cool, and why do we have the Mach 8? Well, this shortcut right here, jumping, mushrooming, tricking off the ramp, clipping the side, jumping over the gap, and doing the big blue ultra shortcut on 150cc. You'll love to see it, incredible. I saw Rod react to that when it first happened. I was cracking up because I could not believe this is a thing. And the funniest part about it, it doesn't even really save much time. It's, it's just barely faster, but it's so cool looking. And that's why some people really have it wrong in this game. They think the biggest shortcut in the game is that one but it barely saves any time on 150cc, and it's a good shortcut on 200, it saves a couple seconds, but there's better shortcuts, and it's just because you go so slow when you're in the air during the anti-gravity sections. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it. Let me know in the comments what Mario Kart 8 Deluxe video you would like to see next. Thank you for watching, but before you go, Funky Kong commands you click on this video or else he won't be added to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe.